from Toronto, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation presents fine family entertainment and starring everybody's favorite. John Van Leesburg, he had six shutouts during the regular season. Going to jinx him. It's all yours. Air Canada Center, the venue for the newest episode of Leave it to Beezer. The Philadelphia Flyers and the Toronto Maple Leafs set to do battle in Game 2. Philly winning 3-zip on opening night at ACC. Welcome back to the Broadcast Center in downtown Toronto, the hub of our coverage of the 99 Stanley Cup playoffs. Since 1939, when they introduced the best of seven format, 11 teams have lost the first two at home and come back to win series, including the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1942. But in 95, Toronto won two at Chicago and lost the series. Uh, so there's both sides of the equation. As we get to Air Canada for more on what Toronto must do in Game 2, let's join Scott Oaks. Scott? Ron, thank you very much. And simply put, the Leafs find themselves trailing this series because they failed to cash in on a fair number of good scoring chances against the Flyers on Thursday night. At the heart of those chances was Matt Sundin. Didn't have a lot himself, save for the penalty shot but he set up Steve Thomas and Frederick Modine numerous times, and they couldn't convert. What a fine line it is in the playoffs, because if just one of these had gone past Van Beesbrook in the first or second period when the game was still on the line, the atmosphere around ACC might be a whole lot different. We had a lot of chances. We created a lot of opportunities to win the hockey game, and uh, had a, we hit the post speed four times and had a couple more chances where he robbed us on the goal line. So... Uh, I think we want to come back and, and try to create the same uh, play that we did and play our style and, uh, and uh, hopefully this time we'll get a couple more by them. Narrow misses for the Leafs mean an impressive defensive effort for the Flyers. The pairing of Desjardins and Terrian spent much of its ice time facing Sundin. He may have been shut up, but Desjardins knows it's not easy to shut down the Leaf captain. Well, I, you handle him uh, just by uh, not giving him any uh, easy, easy chances. Uh, we, you know, we all know that uh, he's, he's a great player and uh, he's going he's gonna to create chances. And, uh, but uh, we want to make sure we don't give them any two-on-ones or breakaways. And uh, I think if we do that, we'll be all right. Ron, Matt Sundin had one goal, Steve Thomas none, in four regular season games against the Philadelphia Flyers. And I think it's fair to say the Leafs know that disturbing trend can't continue much longer. Thanks, Scott. Valerie Zelopukin, by the way, had the game-winning goal, and he is out. Uh, he injured his uh, leg the other night, and he tried it, uh, but Zelopukin is not a goal for the Philadelphia Flyers, so that's at least some good news there. You know, in 1988, Curtis Joseph and Rod Brindamore played together at Wilcox on a Tier 2 Junior A team, and there was a penalty shot against the Calgary Canucks. Canucks got the penalty shot, with Wilcox holding a 3-2 lead. Joseph made the save. They went on to win the Centennial Cup, as it was called that year, now the Royal Bank Cup, and Curtis says, if I didn't play well in that game, win that Centennial Cup, I wouldn't have been drafted it up to play NCAA and I've been the best beer league goalie in hockey right now. Ten years later he signs a 24 million dollar contract to play for the Leafs and he'll face his old buddy Brindamore tonight. The Flyers and the Maple Leafs game two of their quarterfinal showdown coming up from the Air Canada Centre. Bob Cole, Harry Neal standing by on Hockey Night in Canada. Live on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by Labatt Blue. A whole lot can happen out of the blue. And by Ford. For now, forever.
back at the broadcast center en route to the Air Canada Center for Game 2. You really got a sense there were opening night jitters in both Toronto and Ottawa on Hockey Night in Canada. Last night's game up at the Corral Center was truly uh, amazing in terms of the desperation hockey. James Patrick down to block a shot. Damian Rhodes rebounding from allowing a goal in the first minute of play. Uh, we should see some of the same tonight between the Flyers and the Maple Leafs. A chance they'd only played Toronto two games in eight days going into that. So a little bit of rust combined with being nervous. Just some updates. Boston, Carolina, we can confirm Ron Francis is a no-go for the Carolina Hurricanes. Paul Coffey will play, and Joe Thornton, who had had a bruised sternum, is back in for the Boston Bruins. And the injury front out in San Jose, where Colorado are the visitors, the extra layoff has helped. Marco Sturm was supposed to miss for San Jose. He will play tonight, but no Murray Craven, no Andre Zuzan. For the Colorado Avalanche, Adam Deadmarsh was doubtful, but now is okay with the rest. No Valerie Kamensky with a broken arm. No Cam Russell with a shoulder problem. So you're up to date around the league. Let's get to ACC and Bob Cole. Bob. Thank you, Ron, and hello again, everybody. The Maple Leafs have to do something about scoring tonight on this man, Johnny Van Beesbrook, the number one star in game one, fifth playoff shutout. 25 saves for the win. Curtis Joseph is starting, of course, for the Maple Leafs. Yuskevich, Markov, the two defensemen with a puck now. Odin, Sundin, and Thomas up front. Philadelphia, Brenda Moore, Recky, and LeClaire shoot it in. Desjardins, Tyrion, the defenseman, and Joseph covers up at the side of the net. Make sure the puck is frozen. Curtis made 21 saves in that first game, but he was outdueled by Van Beesbrook. The two referee system, of course, through the playoffs. And tonight, Rob Schick with Steve Walkham. Shane Heyer and Mark Wheeler will work the lines. And the face-off to the right of Curtis Joseph. Air Canada Center. Quite noisy as the two teams came onto the ice. And uh, they'll do it again. Not dropped fairly. The Flyers were the top face-off team during the season, but in game one, the Toronto Maple Leafs won 44 and lost 27. Which was a surprise. Roger Nielsen had the monkey around his lineup with the absence of Zella Bukin. So Mark Gregg brought up from the Philadelphia Phantoms, the American Hockey League affiliate for the Flyers, is in the lineup and on the ice. And so is Keith Jones, who had been in to take the faceoff. And he'll likely come back in. This is Mark Gregg. Faceoff to the right of Joseph, just underway in Toronto, game two. Greg went after it and got back to the line. And Joseph makes the glove save off Steve Duchesne. First good shot on goal and the first nice save. Well, Roger Nielsen had to make the lineup change it forward. On defense, we see Dykehouse in for Tertichny, and that was a healthy scratch. But Greg up from the Phantoms will take the place of Zalapukin, and Roger had the monkey around with his lines. Zalapukin got hurt in the first game, came back and tried it after went in and get a knee brace, and here's how he got hurt. As he and Gary Volk go into the sideboard, Zalapukin did not get up very quickly. Like I won the draw, and a quick shot from the line by McGillis is not a flick it away. Joseph going from side to side in the net as Philadelphia come after the Leafs early. Lead pass was not picked up. Sullivan making the go of it. And he showed great hustle. Preventing an icing call to the Leafs. Get it over in front of Van Beesbrook. Had to tip it away with a stick. Mike Powell. And it all against Philadelphia. And McGillis did something to Sullivan in behind the net. And I believe it's McGillis going off. Sullivan skates and makes the big circle. And here comes McGillis. Well, he gets it for elbowing, probably, as he took Sullivan into the back, into the boards right behind the net. The Leafs power play 0 for 6 in game 1, and it has been their nemesis all year long. Dan McGillis at the one-minute mark takes an elbowing penalty, and the Leafs with the faceoff in the flyer zone are on the power play. 0 for 6 in the first game, and that must change as you watch the... Infraction in behind the net as McGillies took the Leaf player in on the boards with the elbow. 
Now the leap, the flyer penalty killers, watch them. They take away the point, man. In this case, it's Carpenter and Berard. Straight back to Berard. Shot. And deflected. Into the crowd. Well, I mentioned the leap power play has been a problem all year long. It, it came to life on a few occasions, but you can see 14%, 17th in the league, 1 for 28 in the last eight games, 1 for 6 against the Flyers uh, in game one on Thursday night. Philadelphia winning the draw, that will send the Leafs back to start out from their own zone. This is Berard, Harpin said to his right, Berard coming the other way. Thomas with the puck, Sundin, right there with him, but Thomas keeps going. And now Sundin is open, takes the pass. Right over the the backhand to went up high. And the Leafs get their first great scoring chance. Perot with the backhand, a little high with it. 115 left in the penalty, Berard coming out again. The lead pass is missed this time. Check down the ice. And Philadelphia wants the time to go back and try and clear it. Berard couldn't stop it. Nearly a two-on-one set up. Berard got back to goal to prevent that. And now Berard will come back for Toronto. 54 seconds left to the penalty. No score. First power play. Leaks move over center. And puck is given away inside the line and cleared again by Philadelphia. Their penalty killers are changing. They have been great in this series, which has just started in that first game. They were terrific. Off a five on three that Toronto enjoyed at one point held them to one shot. Well, a, a careless shoot in by the Leafs defenseman, and we're, they're going to get called for icing. Perot 44 gets a chance right here on the backhand that I think was deflected by the Flyer defenseman carrying up and over the glass. Berard makes a nice play here to keep it in. He nearly loses his head doing it, but he keeps it in, and that led to the chance we showed you by Perot. Face off is coming back in the lead zone to the left of Curtis Joseph. Berard, much needed rest. He, he was on for a minute and a half, only 30 seconds left of the penalty now on that lead power play, which is still going. No score. They have to move in a hurry. Philadelphia again doing a great job. Brandemore stealing the puck. Trying to get a shot. And he'll take this little hit on the boards to kill more time. Philadelphia Flyers with the puck is hauled. And his shot is wide on the short side. Eight seconds left. And the penalty. Leaks come down. One more time. And Derek King drives the shot to Van Beesbrook. Stick save. Reaching out and took one away from Berezin. Oh, well, he didn't get the tight shot he had planned. Teams are at full strength. Berezin again. And King had to stop at the line or he would have been offside. And then couldn't get the pass. He's move up. Stolme forgot the puck and nailed his man. Redberg goes away. Dumps it in deep. McAllister's back against Redberg. This first period. And it's going to be another lead power play when we're back with you. He gets the penalty and it's called roughing here at 340. Let's have a look at it here. Must have been a retaliation. There it is right there, a bit of a punch. Not much of a penalty in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is an East-West game in training camp. And it's early in the game. No score. Nearing the four-minute mark. And the Leafs get it up to the line. That's all. Berard will try it. Laid it off the board. St. Thomas had to hurry the shot in. Carroll was stopped from moving in on it. And the Philadelphia Flyers get it all the way down to Joseph. And they're changing the penalty cutters quickly. Berard starting out. He's been carrying the puck along on this, this second power play for Toronto now. 
the shutdown is. That's four unsuccessful shoot-ins on the power play. If you haven't got somebody who's going to tie the race, it never works. Well, as Berard starting out again, Merrill gets it over the line. Sundin moving up, but Thomas fell against Desjardins. Philadelphia trying to move it out. Stopped at the line by Karpitsev. Sundin to Perrault. Couldn't handle it cleanly, but then did get it back, and Philadelphia Flyers get it down the ice. In the penalty, 53 seconds. The Leafs. Sullivan. Stop. Bernard made a good play to keep it on side. At the side of the net, Sullivan nearly fooled Van Beesbrook, but he stopped it with the stick. Held on to it. Now there's one guy who knew all about the playoffs, Bobby Clark, the general manager and president of the Philadelphia Flyers. He made 10 lineup changes with reference to trades after the season started told me tonight before the game that when we talked about the first game briefly our team can play much better than they did in the first game when they shut out the Maple Leafs three to nothing the Leafs did get their scoring chances just put it in so the Flyers are up in the series one to nothing and they're coming in now Hull trying to shoot it at the net of his block Harrison starting up for Toronto a little pass go, go, go. for Solomon. He and Derek King, close quarters on the boards. Puck loose to the line and out. Yuskevich back. 15 seconds left in the wrecking penalty. Yuskevich with Garrison to the line. The pass across in front of Frank Eastbrook. Easily picked off and cleared down the ice. And the penalty is over. Recky is flattened out. Score. First period coming up to six minutes. Philadelphia looking very poised. Killed off two penalties now. And almost perfectly. Eastbrook had very little to do. Shot to the head. Chris King. Shot angle for him. So on with the rakes. The Domi. Around the net. Domi. Stayed on the outside, and then gave it away, and it shot down the ice. Berard. Here he comes again. Berard, cross center, shoots it in. Here goes Goldie after it. And the Philadelphia Flyers get it out. And Bob McCarthy, and he shoots it in wide of the net to the corner. And the play is called. Another penalty being called from behind the play. This one has to be against Toronto. Warner back in the lineup tonight for Toronto, and he draws a penalty here for charging. In behind the net is where it happened as the Flyers were coming out. So now Philadelphia with their power play. 6.36 the time of this penalty against Warner. Leclerc got it back near the line. Desjardins had to wait. Leclerc comes in there after Markov. Puck on the boards and cleared by Falk down the ice. Perrault's the other penalty killer up front for Toronto. Flyers start out. Our center's to Shane. Shot it over the line. Joseph will try to help out, but he missed it. Right away from him. Lankow. Played it back of the net again. And there's Markov with time. And he put it ahead to Paul. And he shot it down the ice. 40 seconds gone and that minor penalty against Warner of the Maple Leafs. No score. First period. Danger now. Shooting the puck in. They can't center it. Danger now to come back again in the penalty one minute three seconds as he picks it up he's here now nearly got caught got it up then finally to Renberg and he was stopped but he took it back again Renberg played it down Renberg gets a shot off a leg and wide of the net Joseph knocked it away from Jones and Sundin will find the opening to clear it and he's worked out of the net it up for Miguelis. Long pass. Bird. And the goal for it. 
fires and shoots it away on the boards and down the ice. 30 seconds left in the penalty now. Dan McGillis. Lindemore across center, got it in neatly, a dandy pass for Benberg, and a shot blocked! Boards to center. Penalty is over. In this first period, a noisy crowd tonight. Getting behind the home team, and here's Solomon trying to reach for one. Leeds pick it up outside the line and get it back in, and Solomon reach for it. And Berard shooting it in there. Solomon on the outside of the post. Trying to fire one in on the short side. Berard stepping up from the blue line. Cleared it to the far side. And the Flyers just keep it away. Still no score. Rapid set back. You are watching Hockey Night in Canada, the one and only. Curtis Joseph coming up huge for Toronto. It's still scoreless here in the first. And the Leafs win the draw and Thomas hit a circle back. This came the defenseman. Boston then had to poke it away across center, so Rocky is in for Philadelphia. Round the back, and the next intercept that pass. Odin to Sunday. Up there with a long shot, wide of the goal. Odin knew it, and he went in after it. Sunday behind the goal. Thomas Park out in front of Van Beesbrook. Leeds chase it. Sunday pushed off the puck. Odin missed it. And the Flyers get it out with one Maple Leaf back. Parkhoff trying to get back. the center ice. Recky in there with LeClaire. Recky waits. Beautiful pass. And the shot by McGillis is blocked by Joseph. Both teams getting their chances now. Just past the halfway mark of the first period. He's trying to make changes. He got caught. With the extra man on. He hopped off again. Jose had to hurry back. Two flyers are in. Greg knocked it down with his glove. That one after it. Took to the head. Toronto cannot get it out. Hills kept it in. Jones shoots, scores! Beautiful play by Keith Jones. And it's one to nothing, Philadelphia. Well, Keith Jones, a terrific shot. The Leafs got themselves in trouble because they could not get the puck out of the zone along the boards. They had two or three chances to do. The last one by Ferris. And then watch Jones walk off the boards right here and then right from the faceoff dot up over Joseph who went down perhaps a little early on the play. But give Jones credit. He went to the top and he scored and it's one nothing. Philadelphia. You gotta get the puck out when you get your stick on it along the boards. If you don't, you're asking for trouble. And he made the big deep on the Leaf defenseman McAllister before he ripped that high shot behind Curtis Joseph. 9 the time of the goal. One pen of flyers. Greg and McGillis drawing assists on the goal by Jones. And it's his first shot. This playoff season. All right, got the zone. Put the pass through to Derek Kenton. He went in behind the goal trying to pick it up, get some help. Ron Johnson. Five! And attack. Johnson was bucked out in front of the net. Sullivan trying to get it to him. 
Rangers get the puck out. Johnson took a hit on the boards from Bureau. Philadelphia is chopping down the ice. Right back. Makes the return pass. Put it on the boards a little bit too hard for Johnson to handle it. Anyway, and McGillis turns it back to center. Little soft right. pass ahead for Recky. Breaking in. Centered it. Another big chance for Redbird. And he was knocked down. Another chance. Finally, they call it. And there's a penalty coming against Toronto on this play as Redberg tried to score from his knees. And then he was hit. Cross-checking is the call. Power play, Philadelphia. Desjardins shot. Blocked. Philadelphia's to Shane. Kept it in on the boards. To the corner. Myers pass it around. On the outside. Leading one to nothing. Looking for more. It'll be sent back to pick it up. As Toronto will clear it. And change up the penalty killers. Desjardins around the net. Seven minutes left in the period. Center. Ripped it in on the glass. Joseph stopping that, leaving it. But Brindamore was in in a hurry. Pass doesn't go to that. Left to the line. Desjardins. Brindamore in front of the net trying to make contact. Philadelphia pass it around well. Recky from the line. Recky winding up. Take the shot. Desjardins. Recky. Another great play. Right in front. And the shot along the didn't miss by much. Great pressure by Philadelphia. Injured and fired a wicked pass in. Recky, injured and shot. Love saving. Carlos Johnson. He's saving things right now with that wicked shot to the inside of the post to the left of Joseph. And what a quick hand. Well, one thing Philadelphia's got going in their power play is that all four skaters know where Leclerc is. He's in front of the net. So any time they can get the puck through to him, they know there's a possibility he could tip it, he may screen it, or he may grab the rebound. There's a beautiful stop that you talked about, Bob. But look at number 10 here. He's almost impossible to handle in front. You can't tie a stick up. You sure as heck can't move him. And he can get a stick on a lot of shots. What a bonus on a power play to know you got him there all the time. 46 seconds left in the penalty. Chris King in the penalty box for the Maple Leafs. They get it up down the ice this time. Five seconds left with 37. Got the puck for Philadelphia. To the line, here's second. Backs it in, Joseph trying to haul it down, but he missed it. Philadelphia again, pass it around outside. Redbird, quick shot, block, on the back again. The big turn and it's cleared by ball. 11 seconds left in the penalty. Philadelphia fires, leading one to nothing. Greg picks it up, shoots it behind the net. Redberg went in. So did Lankow. Redberg fired it out front of the Leafs, get it up to Chris King. Whipped it into Warner. He's along the boards. It's back for the net. The shot is blocked by Van Beesbrook. And the goalie rolls it, and look what happens now. Lankow and Chris King are rolling around in front of the net. It was a bad angle shot. I'm sure Todd Warner, who made a nice play to get outside the defenseman, hoped if he got the puck in front of the net, good things might happen. Here it is right here. As you can see, Terry and his feet to the outside. Warner hasn't got much of an angle, but he knew King was going to the net. And Van Beesbrook smartly covered the puck before any problem. The goal by Philadelphia. Keith Jones at 11.09, and assistant coach Wayne Cashman. This is only his second game back, Bob. In February, he had back surgery where they had to, to fuse his uh, vertebrae, and then while he was recovering from that, he got infection in his uh, gallbladder, nearly died. They had to take it out, and he told me he's getting better, but it's been a slow, painful process. And when you can knock this guy down for any length of time, you are pretty tough because in this league they couldn't. Saw him this morning. He is walking with a left, of course. 
and is quite sore and a lot of pain. But, uh, you know, Cashman, it's not all that bad, and I do feel better. Each and every day. We hope uh, he gets better. Real fast. Looks to me like the Flyers came into the circle early, and they're going to throw the center out. Bureau's going to get tossed, so Craig Berube, who can count the number of face-offs he's won on one hand, will have to take the draw here against Todd Warner. 5-17 left of the period. 1-0 Philadelphia. Leafs with a draw. Good checking in there, though, by Philadelphia. Blackhouse rides his man to the boards. Can't his bump. And Philadelphia come up with that puck again. Carthy went after it. Get too far. Shot along the boards. Ruby trying to feed it in, but the Leafs get it out. Carthy tipped it over the line. Went after Cote. for Philadelphia. He wants to change into the bench, so he shot it in. 4-25 remaining in the first. In ahead across the leaf line, and Joseph will step behind the net. Knock it away for McAllister. Didn't work. Leclerc. Sundin trying to stop him. Moldin is there for Toronto. Philadelphia. Top checkers. And they're taking the body now. For jumping for Philadelphia. Carry on up there, the defenseman trying a shot. Oh, Mark off. Right behind him, and he pounced. Joseph down on the short side. To stop that one. Mark off. One hand on the stick. Spun around. He wanted a penalty call. Doesn't get it. Philadelphia on the puck. Leclerc ahead. Bring the ball around the goal. Brindamore allowed to come out. Trying to make the play was intercepted. Thomas trying to find a room with Modine. Modine was flat as he got across the line. And McGillis nailed him. 320 left in the first period. 1 0 Philadelphia. Great pace to start this hockey game. Long high shot in by Ishkevich. Thomas can't knock it down. The Flyers get the puck out the center ice again. What a hand pass is called. And stops that play. Here's Ed Snyder, the founder and the owner of the Philadelphia Flyers. Mr. Snyder, in your market, with a team as talented as yours, the expectations are always high. How would you describe them this year? Well, they were high, of course, before Eric got hurt, but I think our fans are realistic enough to know that, you know, we've, we've got a struggle without Eric. So is it fair to say the expectations remain as high as uh, they were previously with Eric Lindros out? I don't think so. Our fans are pretty realistic, but they're excited. Mr. Snyder, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bob. There was a penalty called against the goaltender for Philadelphia, Van Beesbrook. High sticking way from the play, which had been stopped at center ice by hand pass. But the second referee back there had called Van Beesbrook for the high stick. Recchi is serving it. 2.40 left to the period. 30 seconds gone to the penalty already. And Philadelphia leads one to nothing. Standing over the blue line. He's having a tough time getting in. Berard back hands up by Ken. Laid up on the boards by Adam Burke. Blocked it and took a shot. That was stopped. And Hull got it up to center ice. Toronto had to regroup outside of the line. Berard. Two leads on the far side. One of the Bears in. Sullivan right behind him. Bears and is taken in on the boards by Dykhouse. Dykhouse fired it hard but could not get it by Cote. Second chance, he got it up. And Bureau just stalled for time and shot it in. 43 seconds left of the penalty. And he's getting restless with this lead power play tonight. The shot in. Anderson trying to hang on to it. Perot took it away from him, but now Anderson intercepts. And 
shoots it in again. 19 seconds left on this power play. One nothing Philadelphia. Sunbeam trying to do it himself. Got the puck in all right. Thomas shot it behind the goal. Sundin. Sundin was bumped. They're all back to the line. And again, Sally pass to Sundin. He's nailed. And the Philadelphia Flyers are playing it tough. And they get the puck out of the series and the penalty is over. We are in the final minute of the period. Philadelphia won. Toronto nothing. Bankcom shut it around the goal. Chris King trying to poke it away up on the boards. Second white had it, but like now doing a good job and holding it there. Flyers keep pounding the leaks, pounding the puck. Curtis Joseph, there's another one that went off the leg and wide of the goal. Parkinson, he escaped it. He's hit by Recky. Toronto coming up. 25 seconds left in the period. They get up to the line, a long shot. And he's worked stopping the Warner drive. Eighteen seconds left in the period. Philadelphia on the rush again. McGillis passing one in front. Recky, however, lost it. Got it back to the line of McGillis. And a shot blocked. He got it again. Five seconds left in the period. Markov trying to stop Lindemore. Four goals to win the first period. And the Philadelphia Flyers taking it to the Maple Leafs with the body and the forechecking. And the penalty killing. Don Cherry is coming up in the coach's corner in our first intermission. After one period in Toronto, Flyers won, Leafs nothing. One, I think Philadelphia, nice suit, I have to admit. What? Nice suit. Oh, how how come you. you're uh, getting them cut up so high, though? Like, I don't know. I thought it looked good. What did you, you don't like no, them or what? No, I'm just a little interested. Different. It's a, it's a be, new look that you've... Uh... You've got to be different. You've got to be different in this world. All right. How about the Leafs? Look, they're not playing bad. They're playing a little desperate right now. Philly looks like they're in control. They got the game. See, that's all they wanted. Now they're a little, uh, you know, they take it time. The Leafs are pressing a little too much, but the big deal is, in their end, you got an awful lot of passengers with Toronto. I mean, Perot going back there, you got to grab a guy in your end. Grab somebody and just don't go and watch them. That's their problem right now. Tough to get physical because they took a couple of penalties, don't Warner at the one end. And, okay, enough of that. Uh, not that that's a factor so far. Did you see what Lyle Odeline did this afternoon? I certainly did. What do you think I asked for the tape for? Oh, All know. right, watch the tape here. Watch them now. You're going to see the funniest thing I think I've seen. Now, there's a delayed penalty. And Lyle Ornline over at the other side gets the penalty. Now watch what he does. He's ticked off. He takes the penalty. Watch, he thinks it on his. It comes back over and around. Watch what he does. He shoots it back to Brodeur. He thinks his Brodeur is in. He's whack. He just whacks it. Bang. No Brodeur. It was the... It was the... <laughs> Look, he is shooting. No. Give us the net. Good job, Lyle's not a good shooter. You yes, and that? then the then funniest... Check, yeah. checks the net. It wasn't a stick, it was you, Lyle. Good guy, though, but I've never seen that before. Oh, uh, yes, you have. Rob Ramage. A little different. Oh, uh, well, it wasn't the same. He was on the power play, and he was packing it back to the point. Come on. Well, he was on the power play, and he was passing it back to Brodeur. No, it was a delayed penalty. You have to pay attention what goes on. Well, Rob Ramage was on a delayed penalty, wasn't it? I'm not going to take up all your time. But wasn't it on a delayed penalty when Ramage Let's set go. it down the ice? I'll all right. I'll write a letter to you later. Let's okay. go. <laughs> you were there, so I'll give. It, I'll take your word for yeah. it. Well, you go ahead. Uh, penalty shot. That's what uh, Matt yeah. Sandin, you were going to Well, criticize. I like to get you in on this, you know what I yeah, mean? I, know. I was told to get you in more, you know what I mean? You're left out, Thank and you. I talk over you. Anyhow. Who said that? A lot of people. Oh, good. John Shannon, too. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, kids, there's going to be a lot of penalty shots coming, you know what I'm talking about? 
and, in the, and even in the Myers and all over, the kids are going to call out a penalty shot. So when you have a penalty shot, you cannot go in slow. And I'll tell you why. Don't run out yet. When you go in slow, Kelly Rudy will tell you. Get him here. When you go in slow, you know you have to shoot. The other way, when you really are uh, going full tilt, he doesn't know what you do, and he'll stay back in because he doesn't know whether you're going side. But when you go in slow like Sundin, he knows they're going to shoot. Watch him come out here now. you got to go faster. This, I thought this was a practice he was doing. Shoot out after practice. Doesn't this look like after practice? Oh, well. I'll just go in and have a little... Hey, no. Oh, well, I missed it. Oh, well. You see how far he was out? I think we see it again. You can't go this slow. You really got to get going to get him to watch how far he comes out, and then he goes back in. He knows he wasn't going to do because he's going too slow. No goalie told me you should come in off the side boards. You ever oh, see yeah. that happen? What goalie was that? Yeah, a guy who sold me a car, played in an uh, industrial league. Good. But he Listen said that they are going in straight. That's why he's selling you cars. I know, but he says you pull the goalie, he's got to open the five hole. Good, that's why he's selling cars. Anyhow, we're out of time. No, we're not. Okay. <laughs> Flash Hollett. We buried Flash Hollett yesterday. Here's Flash Hollett. 13 years in the National Hockey League. Two Stanley Cups. He was a captain on them with Boston. Played for Detroit. Here's the picture of him. Here he's in on the right, right next to Silaps. They were the fastest skater. And he was second and Silaps was there. He is there. Silaps, he next to him right there. He was the fastest skater. And he, 13 years, all-star. There he is with his champion. He scored the winning goal coming up. There he is there. He's wearing number two, Eddie Shore's number. I don't understand that. There's Mr. Zero, Frankie Vrimsek next to Johnny Crawford to the right. And there he's scoring the winning. There's Turk Brona. He's putting the puck in there now. Unbelievable. Now, 13 years, uh, two Stanley Cups, scored 20 goals. The first defenseman to score 20 goals, and the next one to score was Bobby Orr. Got the winning goal, like I said. At, uh, an unbelievable. After he was finished, he uh, had a stockbroker, and he lived to be 88. And you know, he's not in the Hall of Fame. I don't know what you have to do to get in the Hall of Fame like that. And I don't want you to get mad at me, the Hall of Fame people, because if I'm for you, you know. But here, 13 years, Stanley Cup winners, uh, score the goals, captain of Stanley Cup. Please, he's a. And we got something here. Con Smythe thought I was going to forget, didn't you? No. Con Smythe. Con Smythe, Major Con, who knows hockey, watch what he says about Flash Hollett. Go ahead, roll it. If you got it there, you better have it there. I only trade one man in my life that I uh, thought I got the worst of it. And I did that <coughs> on the advice of a couple of older players on the team that said he'd never be any good. Said he did this and he did that and so on. I traded him and uh, it was Flash Hollett. He turned out to be one of the all-time great players. Won the championship in Boston and Detroit. And what can I tell you? What can I tell you if Major Con Smythe says he's the great, all-time great, why isn't he in the Hall of Fame? Dick Irvin's uh, dad said, Con Smythe, smartest hockey man he ever met. Dick's written about it in all his books. And uh, the other thing I'm glad for, and you've said this many times, like you complimented Jim Coleman in the paper the other day, say things that are good about people uh, when they're still here to enjoy it. And, and now uh, he's gone, and he'll never know. you've said that him. many times because you love Flash. Yeah. Uh, he should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's, a, that's an automatic. I don't know what the mistake is. And this guy will be one day, too. And uh, you also promote promoted him uh, long before uh, he became in vogue. Mike Pekka. Are you going to show anything of Mike Pekka? Oh, all right. I thought you were going to say you're out of time. That's what you usually do. No. Mike Pekka, let me tell you something, folks. If you've ever seen this guy in the street clothes, you've seen him. He looks like death warmed over. He can't be 5'10", because I'm six foot and I'm looking down at him. Got to be about 160 pounds. He's got those granny glasses on, eh? He right looks like Tugnut. Yeah. He looks like a, a college student for zoology or something. But watch him on the draws. This guy is a warrior. Watch him on the draws. Different ways he takes. You kids, you go on draws. Now watch this when he gets it back. Don't be stupid when you go in, I'm going to do it. He gets it this way. I mean, he's always there. Watch him get it this her way. Another way he gets it. Hits it. Walks through. Remember, John? Walks through like that. He didn't, just didn't connect. Shoots it out. See, kids? He shot it out. He shot it out. He just didn't go in his backhand. He's smart. He's, he's that, I'm telling you, he's, he's like Brian Kilray, who he played for. Now watch when he does it here again. He kicks it. It's unbelievable. See that? He uses this thing. Kids, when you think, when you go into the, the thing, it's not the, 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 the face-off. is not to get the game started. This guy's a warrior. I tell you, I love it. I tell you, this guy can play back 40 years ago. He's like Ted Lindsay. I know he was a winger, but he's a little guy. And listen. Fathers, when they say your kid is too small and he can't play hockey, think Pekka. And he's another Canadian kid. You know, not bad, considering. Uh, anyhow, I like you in your uh, 
high cuts, uh, although I do prefer your half cut on uh, Coach's Corner on Hockey Night in Canada. Let's go, Flash. Get in there. Coach's Corner on CBC. Brought to you by your Alliance Tire Professionals. Keith Jones with a beautiful goal. The Philadelphia Flyers lead Toronto 1-0 after 20 minutes at Air Canada Centre in Game 2. They're up 1 in the series and in the game. This is not a Michael Pekka, uh, but he's a dandy player for the Maple Leafs with Scott. Chris McAllister of the Leafs to tell us how he thinks his team is handling the forecheck of the Flyers and their attempt at rougher play. Chris? Uh, I think uh, we're turning the puck up into their their pressure too much uh, along the boards. I think we have to uh, change sides with the puck and come up to uh, the centerman and hopefully get a clean breakout that way. Did you sense uh, that your team started this game with more jump than it had in the series opener? I think we had more jump. Uh, on our power play, I think we have to calm things down a little bit, uh, come up as one unit instead of trying to do individual stuff out there, and hopefully uh, second period will come out and do that. Now, what is the game plan for the second period now? Um, just calm things down. Uh, Regroup as a as a team and uh, come out harder in the second period. Thank you, Chris. All right, thanks, Scott. Up to the minutes. Brought to you by Ford. For now, forever. Around the NHL tonight, Pittsburgh won a matinee four to one to even their series. They'll play Game Three tomorrow at the Civic Arena. And Druzak gets his first ever NHL goal, and it's the game winner. No Yarmer Yager. He was out with a groin injury for Pittsburgh. Phoenix won 4-3 in OT. Shane Doan got the winner, as you see, at 8.58. Happy Bulin versus Fuhrer. The shots were 32-26 in favor of the Blues in this one, but they fall. Boston had just three shots in the first period. Carolina had seven. Herbe and Defoe at it again. No Ron Francis. Joel Thornton is back for the Bruins. 0-0 at the end of a period, and Vernon Roy. Colorado San Jose is a 10:30 Eastern start in the first game of that series. It's one nothing Philadelphia at ACC. Up to the minutes. Brought to you by Ford. For now, forever. Live on CBC Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by Ford. For now, forever. The big Philadelphia Flyers leave their dressing room to come out for the second period. And brother, did they show their size in the first period? They're leading one to nothing on the strength of that first 20 minutes. Well, they were the superior team in the first 20 minutes. They worked harder than the Leafs. They were much more physical. The Leafs tried to stand up to them, but in the Philadelphia zone, the Leafs forwards couldn't move. In the neutral zone, there was no room to gather speed or make cross-ice passes. And in the Leafs' own zone, the forechecking of the Flyers caused all kinds of trouble. The Leafs' advantage in speed has not shown in four straight periods in this series. The only goal coming from Jones, from Greg and McGillis, and in 11 on Well, Desjardins led the uh, Flyers a nice time in game one. He looks like he's headed that way again. He plays the power play. He plays the first half of the penalty killing, and he often plays against Matt Sunday. Philadelphia shooting the puck in to begin the second period. Odin, though, nice one to the line. Did not get it out. Second chance. He poked it up across center ice, and Desjardins has to come back fast. Odin was in hard. Looks as if Pat Quinn is telling his charges he needs more hitting as they're in for checking. There's Modine again, and another hard hit on Desjardins. And then the centering pass. And Van Beesbrook has to cover up or the Leafs come out in the early part of this second period with some hitting of their own. Well, I don't think they can out-hit the Flyers over the whole course of the game, but they certainly have to tell the Flyers that they're not going to be deterred in their style of play if it's a rough game. So on the very first shift, we see Modine try his best to knock Desjardins off the puck. And I think it's speed and skill against Braun and Courage in this series so far. And the Leafs' speed advantage and the offensive advantage they showed all season has yet to appear. Face off, one, 
by Toronto and Barrison shot. With one to fight. Arrow hooked it back to his own line. Brady Hall waited. Shot it back in. Linda Morris for checking. Arrow gets the pass away. Arkansas up near center, and he was hit there. Fires back. Ellis again carrying the puck out to Claire, and he shoots it in off the boards, and Joseph is out. But he missed it. It's center! Claire is out of the net, where he likes to park, and he got a great scoring chance that time. One to nothing, Philadelphia. Redbird steals the puck in there, centered it. But he got out the ball, and he gets the Bearson. Bearson up over the Philadelphia line, looting a hit. Went in after it. Shane cleared it away down the ice. Jones nearly picked it up at center. Just missed it. Therefore, an icing call against Philadelphia. We're leading one to nothing. Now get a 28-point summer checkup, plus oil, lube, and filter, tire rotation, and a free jug of washer fluid. All for just $29.95. Only at Canadian Tire. Well, John LeClaire missed a great opportunity to make it 2-0. This guy knows where to go in the offensive zone and doesn't take any time at all to get the shot away. And right there, he had Joseph down and the puck went over the net. Here's another look at it. He gets in the hole, and when he gets in the hole, he looks for the hole, and he nearly had Joseph there. Sullivan in against Langkow on this face-off. One by Langkow. Langkow's quickly up on the boards to Greg. He's catching it up. It's centered, and Greg just barely missed it. Three. Get in on the boards, Mike Johnson. Back house, make sure the puck was in. And again, Frank turning with it. It's centered again, right to the crease. On the other side. Jones keeps it in. Frank wants it down to look around for Lankow. And the Leafs are unable to get the puck out of the zone. Not against this poor checking line. Jones up there with Lankow and Greg. Center again. Finally, Toronto up the line. Sullivan got a pass away. Here it came down to Johnson. Sullivan hits him with a net. Johnson giving a ride. In on the boards by Burt. Greg. He hit Kent with that clearing attempt. Greg again. And Kent bumped him. It's Sullivan. And Johnson skate. Sullivan to the far side with it. Looks back to the point. McAllister shot the point with an up on the To the glass. It's cleared back down across center. But outside is Mark Gregg. And they'll bring it back inside the leaf line. When we look at the size of these two teams, at least when we give you the tail of the tape, it doesn't show that the Flyers are a lot bigger on the average but they play a lot bigger. And so far, it's been the difference in tonight's game anyway, as the Toronto Maple Police are fighting off too many guys that are too strong, and drive the president and general manager of the Leafs cannot be enjoying this hockey game. The score 1-0 is flattering to the Leafs after 23 minutes. They saw Philadelphia again controlling it and getting the puck out. Renberg up there with Anderson. Anderson, number 14, and after it. With Renberg circling the net. Look out! And a by Joseph. What a great scoring chance for Renberg again. And another big stop by Curtis Joseph. Well, Renberg, who was acquired during the season from Tampa for a second stint with the Flyers, forces Joseph into a great stop to keep the score at one nothing Philadelphia. That's two terrific blood saves Joseph has made. Another one coming in the first period. This one by Renberg, just inside the post. Keeping it at one nothing Flyers. Harold shoots it in. Bankhouse was in fast, 
Got it ahead to McCarthy. His pass through center ice. Ruby testing Joseph with a hard high one. And the Toronto goalie will hang on to it. 340 gone in the second period. Well, lots of hockey in the National Hockey League in round one. In addition to this game, which is one nothing Philadelphia, a surprise without Yager. Pittsburgh beats New Jersey 4-1 in overtime. Phoenix beats St. Louis 4-3. Both those series are 1-1 now. And in Greensboro, North Carolina, it's nothing nothing in the second period. And stay tuned and watch this one. This will be a good one. That comes on after this one if you keep watching CBC. Second half of our Saturday night doubleheader in the playoffs this time. We'll keep you posted on all the happenings in this run for the Stanley Cup. Carrion for Philadelphia. Missing the net by a foot for that shot from the line. Here's Jones and to Leclerc, and his shot is blocked by Joseph. Leclerc again getting set up and coming close. Fired in by Toronto off the boards. Carrion got it ahead. Brenda Moore to the far side with it. Recky won't pick it up. The goalie is out. Joseph going the other way. Leclerc saw it. Flipped it behind the net for Recky, but he kind of went off balance and then was bumped by Sundin. Bodine waiting for it. Might get to the center ice, and there's Bodine. Can't get going. Leclerc for checking for Philadelphia. Leafs get at the center, and Sundin has no place to go, but shoot it in. And the goalie, Van Beesburg, didn't see it. Right off the bat. It looked dangerous, but it was just wide of the post. Three, five minutes of play in the second. one nothing Philadelphia. Bote and Sundin. No need. He left in your center for the defense when you stayed at Jameer's Trying to center it. Can't make the centering pass. Not count by Warner. Lost it. Flyers will bring it out. Toronto have to move a little quicker. Giving the checkers time to do just that. Pick them up with a check. The Leafs are having a tough time getting any flow to their game. Down the right side. Bumped by Recky. Recky got the puck away from the lead player. Red Blue. And he's away skating hard. Pass gets in there. Knocked down in front by Burt. The defense will join the rush. Puck it away. McAllister holds it with a skate. Redberg trying to knock it loose. McAllister put it high on the glass and out. Down the ice. Anderson, Dykehouse, Dykehouse back for Anderson, he's in there, Anderson coming, and the pass didn't work. Lead pass near center ice, it was Johnson, but he was turning back. Here come the Flores, the Flyers again, Brecky. Dykehouse's shot is blocked by Joseph. Philadelphia, 14 shots, Toronto, 8. Flyers are leading 1-0. Continue that trend toward a bigger, stronger team. Craig Berube came over from Washington at the deadline. And here is a list of the players that were acquired during the season. Nearing the seven-minute mark of the second period, it's still just one goal in the game. Craig from McGillis. Make that Jones from Greg and McGillis in the first period. At 11.09, the first for Jones of these playoffs. Craig called up today. Gets his first assist. Leaves got in. Yes. Sullivan showing great speed going in on the forecheck. Good hustle by Sullivan. Gary King to the line. Perfect set shot. Blocked by Philadelphia. They had a good shot. shot down the ice and Berard is back. Johnson back there with him. It was Berard who played it. Another icing call against the Philadelphia Flyers.
Hockey Night in Canada, the one and only. We invite you to join us on the website, Hockey Night in Canada, www.cbc.ca. Jardin, clearing play, but that's all by Philadelphia. The Leafs back to pick it up, and it comes. Shoots it in, and these broke out of it. Not sure, the puck was nice and flat for the defenseman to move away, and there's Desjardins. Put the pass in, Brenda Moore didn't see it. Too soon, and he's onside now as Desjardins shot it in too quickly. Well, Rod, Brenda Moore's wearing the C in the absence of uh, Eric Lindros. Eric Lindros skated this morning. And the optional skate the Flyers took, there was about six of them. Lindros in his sweats, not even full equipment. He's trying to get over the loss of 15 pounds or more. And the problems that that severe injury caused him. Skated pretty hard, but uh, didn't look anywhere near like he could play in the near future. Here's a, almost a break for Thomas. He had the puck and then overstated it with nobody in front of him but Van Beesbrook. Thomas, quick pass up near center ice. 17 takes it. Gerard who has brought it in, gave it back to Sundin. Thomas hooked it up. He sounded like a whistle might have sounded just before when the Philadelphia player was hurt. Oh, in behind the goal. He hasn't moved a bit. The referee blew the whistle when he had a look at him here. It's hard to tell who it is. It's Desjardins who's down. And as the Leafs put the puck in the net, the whistle went. So I think there's a good opportunity. That goal will not count. Eric Desjardins and it looks like he's completely knocked out. Motionless, Harry. This is what you hate to see. He is not moving his skates. Uh, the trainers are out there quickly and uh, having a good look at him and trying to talk to him now, as you see. But uh, the Flyers are looking very concerned. The players, Bob, right away when they went to him, long before the trainer got out there, they made some very definite signals to get somebody out here. They could see right away this was not a normal injury. Here it is right here. Steve Thomas comes in and elbows him right to the face, or is it a shoulder? And down goes Desjardins. Here's another look. Desjardins trying to pick the puck off the end of the rink. May have been a shoulder as much as anything. And the Leafs score on the play, but it came after the whistle. Well, you'll love to see this, really, with the veteran like Desjardins getting up and talking and uh, trying to regroup, and uh, hopefully he's okay. Hard-looking hit on the boards, and his head hit the glass. He was down, motionless, for quite a few seconds. And here he is, up on his skates, shaking it off. No, there won't be a goal. I, I knew I heard a whistle, and we're going back over to see if we can pick it up. Let's listen for the whistle. heard it was because it went right between his legs there doesn't appear to be a penalty on it let's have another look from the overhead camera pretty close the whistle had gone you heard that the shot though was taken and uh, the officials have already announced no goal. The rule, the rule of thumb on that for the referee is that if he thinks it's a serious injury, he can blow the whistle, even though Philadelphia didn't touch the puck after Desjardins was knocked into the board. If he thinks it's just a normal, if it's just a normal injury where the guy's moving and it doesn't look too serious, then they have to wait until Philly touches the puck before they blow the whistle. And it's the decision is made by the officials on the ice. This is one area where you do not 
go upstairs. That's not in the book. Now here's the, the situations you can't go upstairs. They've used all of them at one time or another this year, but not this time, not on the list. Still 1-0 Philadelphia and the face-off to the right of John Van Beesbrook. Leafs have had just eight shots. It's been a while since they had one on the net, and that one missed. Toronto on it, though, Sunday, and through the crease, and he's bumped immediately by Burke. And he knocked it down, flipped it in high onto the glass. Pass over in front. The series has taken on a bitter complexion. After the hit on Desjardins, Desjardins walked to the dressing room, so he was a lot better in two or three minutes after we saw him lying on the ice. How badly hurt he was, we'll try to find out for you. Here's the hit on Langkow. This is Thomas who throws a good body check. Those kind where you just kick the guy, you only get a bit of it. Michael gives him a little shot in the back of the leg. And he's still upset about that. I don't know why he was. It was a good hit. Harry, we played nearly nine minutes of the second period, and the Leafs have had just one shot on goal in this period. Well, here's Terry going after Thomas right after the injury. <laughs> Steve Thomas, you're not going to scare him away from playing the way he wants to play, but they want to send a message. Well, Bob, one of the reasons why the Leafs have had so few shots on goal is they can't get through the neutral zone in control of the puck, and they've been forced to shoot it in a way more often than they usually do. And they've had an awful time trying to recover it. The flyer defense can get back, and even if it's a tie for the puck, the stronger, bigger flyer defensemen are too much for most of the Leafs forwards. Philadelphia has had just the four shots in this period. But they have taken on that checking roll again, as they did when they opened the scoring in game one. Then got the bonus goal in the second period, then shut him down. Like down Barard, by the way, are in the penalty box, lost to the Miners. 1-0 Philadelphia, and the Leafs coming up. And McAllister made the move at the line, and Falk was offside on that rush. Well, one of the greatest Leafs of all time, Daryl Sidler, watching Philadelphia play his former team, must bring back fond memories for Sidler, who had lots of strong games and actually played a little bit for Philadelphia. Yes, he did. Before he went on to Detroit. But this guy here typifies the Toronto Maple Leafs, like very few others. Toronto. Nearly offside, they did not get the puck all the way over the line. Frankie moved up. Frankie handling the puck well. Along the line, feeding a pass through, and it's stopped by Carpenter. Hulk flipped it over the line and just did get out of the way of a hit that was coming. Hulk back to help out inside his own line. Now, he's out there checking the pass. Going to get hit again. McGillis hits everything that moves along the boards on his side. Now McGillis will lug it out. Up for Anderson, hucked over his stick, carpet set, and rushed the pass. Johnson forced to go back. Taking the body. And they're in on the forecheck again. 
Will Moore is down, but he still fights for it. Ote from the corner for Toronto. Johnson. No room for him over there. Ote to Carpet Sam back to Johnson. Johnson coming in the slot. Waits for the line. A long shot. Not that Sullivan. Came close to getting one. Johnson's on the bottom of this pile. He tried to dig the puck from underneath Van Beesbrook. And now the Flyers are trying to dig a hole to put him in. Both linesmen are in. I can't see the Flyer defenseman. Oh, it's McGillis by the look of it. And number three, McGillis pounced on Johnson in front as Johnson, as the whistle went, was trying to dislodge the puck. It is still Philadelphia. One to nothing. With an update from Greensboro, John Van Beesbrook, Byron Defoe were the same number, and both are perfect until now. There's the first goal in 88 minutes and 24 seconds on Defoe. It's 1-1 there. 90 minutes and 26 seconds. John's the perfect, Bob and Mary. All right, the first two penalties that have been called. Berard and Lankow have 29 seconds remaining, and now it looks like a power play for Toronto with... The penalties that have just been called when you look at this. Here's the scramble in front. Sullivan gets a shot. Watch Johnson come in, and he tries to dig it from underneath Van Beesbrook. And, of course, McGillis jumps on him. Here's another look at it. The flyer defense would have been tough on the leaf forwards. And Johnson tries to ram it in, and then he jumped by McGillis, who's going to get the extra two minutes. Dykehouse is in the penalty box area along with McGillis. Desjardins is in the Philadelphia dressing room and the good news for Philadelphia fans, he is expected to return. He was hit hard in behind of the Philadelphia net by Thomas and his head hit the glass. And he went down. Mark, Mark Quite a few off seconds and, before he got up. Markov and Dykos got coincidental penalties, and the extra penalty went to McGillis. I'm sure they were all roughing. 9.30 remaining in the second period. 1-0 Philadelphia. Leafs on the power play again. They're 0 for 3 in the, that department tonight. And only one shot in their last power play. So, Toronto with the crowd chanting to get going, Leafs. Sundin brings it up. Sundin right to the net, got it up front. Sullivan passes up, quick shot, stopped by Van Beesbrook. That's his best of the game so far. And Merard is coming back, his penalty having been served. Good passing by Toronto on that effort. And pass this time, though, for Sullivan. It's too far. He can't hang on to it. And it's cleared out by Bureau down the ice. One minute gone in the McGillis minor. Leaves on a power play. Trailing. One to nothing. Philadelphia. And to kill yet another one off. They were successful on three of them. Mark with Sam around the goal. Sundin skates to his left. Goes the other way. Leaves move up. But the pass was off. Hero skate. Philadelphia will send the Toronto Maple Leafs back again with 33 seconds left in the minor now. To McGillis. Two leaps back together in their own zone. Gerard. Coming out. Right wing pass. Shot in by Derek Kent. Barrows in there first. Harrell back to the point to Cote. And the shot is just wide of the goal. Clear down the ice. Eric Desjardins back on the ice. Picking the feel of things. Now he's going to the Philadelphia bench. It's the Toronto Maple Leafs. And their power play winding down. And the Philadelphia Flyers doing a great job while shorthanded. Still 1 0 Flyers. Nearing 13 I minutes saw. of play. The second period. Called 7.13 to play. 
in the center. Is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet, tried, tested, and true. Eric Desjardins came out, skated very briefly on one shift, and then left, and he's staying on the bench. And he looks to be okay. Good news for Philadelphia. Teams are at full strength. Leaves 0 for 4 in the power play now in this game. Can't find a way to get one by John Van Beesbrook. Bob, they don't get any shots. They're very few of them. So it's not just that they're being beaten by the goaltender, but sometimes you are in a power play. Philadelphia Flyers once again pick it up in their own zone and get it up. Leaves have had four shots in this period now. Got it ahead. Warner couldn't keep it in. Markov. Blasting one from center ice. Easy play for Jones to pick it up, and he failed to get it out. Didn't hit. Got out anyway. Offside. He knocked it down. Puck was behind him. He was in. Put himself offside. Well, Eric Desjardins was a doubtful starter in the playoffs because on March the 21st, on a game against Detroit in Philadelphia, Desjardins hurt his knee. And, they, and here's a replay of the injury. And it was uh, Holmstrom and Desjardins got tangled up with each other in a harmless little fall. You can see the expression on Desjardins' face as he goes down. And the Flyer organization thought for sure that that meant surgery. And on this one, Desjardins lay so still for so long, it looked more serious, I guess, than it really is. He's the best flyer defenseman, plays the most, leads them in points from the blue line, and is a key man on their power play. Philadelphia Flyers playing a very controlled game. Style might have changed a little bit with the news that Lindros was out would not play, certainly in this first round, and not likely in the next one, should Philadelphia move on. So the Flyers are checking very closely, waiting for their chances. LeClaire trying to find a chance right here. He got over at the side of the net, had to go behind to pick it up. Knocked down by Carpenter. Lindemore trying to hook it away from Carpenter. Philadelphia on the attack, Paul shot it in behind the goal. Brandon Moore couldn't stop that pass, but it's nailed at the line again. Finally cleared by Toronto, but it may be icing if it gets down there for Terry. And it's an icing call against Toronto with 5.31 left to play in the second. Let's visit with Scott Oak now. Bob, thanks very much. Terrible luck befell Igor Korolev last night after missing a month with a broken finger. He broke his ankle in last night's game. Broken lower leg is the best way to describe it, I guess. Igor, have you come to terms with this bad luck yet? Uh, it's probably not a bad luck. It's no luck at, at all. Like It's my first injury in uh, seven years in NHL. And, uh, I don't know. It's no luck. I can't explain this. Did, did you know when this happened that it was broken right away? Yeah, it was really painful and uh, I kind of feel something in my leg, but I know. We'll find out in the morning if the X-ray is broken. Find out if you need surgery, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, not yet. We need to get X-ray, another X-ray next week. If, uh, we'll see what's, uh, what they showed us. But we're not going to see you play again until next year? Probably not. Igor, I thank you for your time. You're welcome. Bob. No luck at all, for sure. Broken finger, waited so long to get back into the Stanley Cup playoffs. First game, broken leg. Out for eight weeks is the first report. Fired on the board to And a hard hit at center ice on Recky, but he bounces up rather quickly. He's in with Renberg. Here's Recky. Nearly stole him. Berg stopped the puck to center, gave it to the shame, and he shot it in. McAllister and Kocha. Knocked down by Greg. Quick shot, rebound. With the side of the net. Philadelphia leading one to nothing. 
They're impatient, waiting for a chance to maybe go up 2-0. Just like they did in game one. And then an empty net goal by Desjardins completed the scoring. Shut out for Van Beesbrook. And they won that game 3-0. For the Roger Nielsen's Flyers have shut the Leafs out nearly 100 straight minutes in this playoff. McAllister throws a big hit on Mark Brecky right in front of the Flyer bench. Brecky bounces up, as you mentioned, Bob, and didn't seem to bother. Nearly stole the puck for a scoring chance. Oh, trying to drill one on the net from outside the line. Errol stuck. Not going to cross in front of the net. Flyers in there again to pick it up. In their own zone and get it out. Jones shot it in where Joseph played it on the boards. Markov will have to turn back with it. Ball. He missed it. Dykehouse and Jones. Ball can't find it. And it just barely gets outside the line against Langkow. No further play. 3.43 left. Now get a 28-point summer checkup, plus oil, lube, and filter, tire rotation, and a free jug of washer fluid. All for just $29.95. Only at Canadian Tire. Rod Brindamore, who's an underrated hockey player, gets a chance to play in the big line, and never takes an easy stride. 484 consecutive games, the longest of the current Ironman streaks. Carpets have. Pass going right to Desjardins. Oh shot it in. It's right after it. One shot on the outside of the post from a very difficult angle. Ruby again. Cutting to the corner and around the net. Out in front with a shot. Doesn't let the rebound McCarthy. And he can't find it right in front of Joseph. Two flyers with big chances. 3.05 left to the period. Ross was bumped at center ice. Toronto unable to get anything going now for the post checking of the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers, mind you, up just by one goal. Shots are 16 11 in favor of Philadelphia. Domi is on the ice and in there for Jackie Carey. Did not see Sundin come in, but he missed the puck. And Hall got it out. Three flyers in center ice bringing the puck in. Rindemore on the boards. Shot at the net and knocked away by Joseph with a step. Hull will have to come back and Domi is right on his tail. Carrion hit Domi. The Leafs get the puck. Domi took it on a stake, was flattened. And it's taken by Tyrion back near the line. And then flipped away by Desjardins. Shot wide of the goal. Down to two minutes left for the second period. Hall again. Coming out front of the pass to Bodine, the only one there. And he shot it down the ice. Thomas trying hard to get there. One do it. Nighthouse left it for Burt. Two fires. One back. Redberg tried to make the pass to Leclerc. Was up there with him. Along with Recky. Three of them were on that rush. Get it up to center ice. Odin trying to fire that hard shot through. That was blocked easily at the line. Renberg on the puck. That's broken up with Bakehouse. Brings it up near the leaf line again. He had to wait for Renberg to come out of the zone. He did not, and offside was called. 121 remaining in the second period. And tomorrow, the Eastern Quarter Final Game 3. Ottawa at Buffalo. Buffalo leading the series 2 to nothing. Dallas and Edmonton. Dallas up 2 nothing, but Edmonton, they say, have been right in the games, even though they lost. They go to Philly tomorrow for Game 3 of this series on Monday. Game 4 also in Philadelphia on Wednesday. 115 left of the period. Johnson, Blakely, Rotate. Sullivan didn't see it. He 
It was covered very well by Duchesne. Last minute of play in this period. Final minute now. Peterson. Big shot. Joseph. And you go down. He didn't quite see it. And the Air Canada Center showing their disapproval. Well, the Leaf bench stood up in unison to object about that play. Sullivan thought he had it over the line and then didn't pass it back out again on the rush. But uh, the linesman made the call, and Pat Quinn isn't too happy with it because it was one of the few dangerous looking rushes the Leafs have been able to manufacture in this game all season long they've been a very dangerous team on the rush in this series that is not true 45 seconds left in this period back down his own zone to Desjardins he was caught on the ice a little bit now Jones was going down the center ice and that is going to bring about a penalty against the Toronto Maple Leafs Jones, a through center, trying to join the rush, was a hole down in the center ice area. Keith Jones, he scored the only goal of the game. Kane in the first period at 11.09. Let's have a look at the penalty. Come to Kote, there it is, you can see right at the center zone. Kote was trapped on it, so he tripped zone. Uh, Jones and with 30 seconds left in the second period the Flyers who are up 1-0 but seem to be in control of the game have a power play. They're 0 for 2 in the power play in the game. Nice way to end the period for Philadelphia. The extra man. And if they don't score a nice way to start the third period. Shot down the ice. Tripping penalty. Against Cote. 20 seconds left in the period. Philadelphia Flyers to Shane over center. Gets the long zone. Played it on the wing correctly, and he thought Desjardins was at the point right behind him. Desjardins. Near center, Duchesne, quick to the head, Leclerc, hard shot, okay, but he missed the net. He had to hurry it, knowing the time was down. And the horn goes to him. The second period, the shots. Philadelphia, ahead of the shot clock by a margin and leading in the hockey game, one to nothing. They were two nights ago, leading by one through two periods. Here's Mark Recchi. Mark, how much did the intensity rise after the hit on Eric Desjardins? Well, it was a great, uh, you know, obviously when stuff like that happens to you, you know, your top defenseman, the guy's going to rise to the occasion. And, uh, you know, we, we brought out a little, it brought out a little more physical play in us. And, uh, you know, it was a heck of a period by both teams. And, and uh, you know, we're in a good position, and we have to shut them down here. In the yeah, here, here you are, Mark, in a position to uh, take two from the Leafs in their building. Who'd have thought that possible? Well, you know, it's not over, but, uh, you know, we, we know we're in a pretty good position right now. If we go out and play a heck of a 20 minutes, we can go home with a 2 nothing lead. And then, you know, the guys are going to be ready and concentrating. And, and uh, you know, there's going to be nothing left in the tank after this game. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Mark Recchi and his mates up by one through two periods. The satellite hot stove is next on Hockey Night in Canada here at the Air Canada Centre. It's Philadelphia 1. The Leafs, no score. Satellite hot stove. Brought to you by Bell Canada. First hot stove of the playoffs, Eric DeHatchik joins us from Calgary, Al Strachan's in St. Louis, and John Davidson's a long track from Ottawa to California, but has made it to Morrow Hill broadcast the Ducks and Detroit. And Al, let's begin with you. Scotty Bowman's thoughts on uh, the setup for the playoffs. He was offered 2-3-2. Yeah, he's sensitive to the situation in uh, Littleton, as we all are, the tragedy there, but the events that they transpired are that Colorado got the kind of playoff format that Scotty would like, which is you start on the road for two, you come back home for three, and then you play one and one. Right now, he has the option, being in the East with a big time difference, he could accept a 2-3-2 two, two if he wanted, where he starts on the road. He said, that's no good. You go on the road, now if you get a 2-2, two, two, then you're playing the crucial game five on the road, you're being punished. But
but it, and also if you split the first two at home, then you end up, you can lose it on the road. You lose the next three. This way, you start with two on the road. If you split there, you can come and you can win it at home. You got game five at home, and you got game six and seven going back and forth. He said if that was an option, he would have taken it. But it's not an option, and maybe the league should make it one. Eric, speaking of Colorado, San Jose, <laughs> Owen Nolan stirred the pot when he said, Orwa can be great, but you can also blow a lot of pucks by him, and they don't have a whole lot of depth. Now, do you accept uh, his theory? Well, a few words in defense of Owen Nolan, and the people in our business are always trying to get uh, players to say something interesting. I think Owen Nolan has hit the, the nail on the head here. I mean, Patrick can be sensational, but anybody that's watched the highlight reel the last three weeks knows that he's had a lot of problems mishandling the puck. And if you, if you know Colorado's offense, the first two lines, which feature Fleury, Sackick, and Forsberg, are demonstrably better than lines three and four. So here's somebody finally saying something interesting in the playoffs <laughs> that's true, and everybody's yeah. on it. I, I, I have no problems with him saying what he said. You know, Eric, I think with Patrick Waugh, he gets bored. He gets bored yeah. playing the game, and that's why he leaves yeah. the net and messes around with the puck. He even in New York last year, I think it was, <laughs> skated the center ice with the puck. But I think he'll dig in come playoff time. Talking about people talking about things, how about Mark Bureau and Vinny Donfus slamming the coaching staff in Montreal? I, I find it awfully interesting that, uh, and it, yes, it makes for good copy like you're talking about, but I find it interesting that uh, these guys slam people when they're out of town. Well, it's still good that they do this. I hate when I see in the paper and it says so-and-so never met a microphone he didn't like. Why are you complaining about this? This is what <laughs> buy, people buy papers for. We'd all, yeah. we'd all agree except the coaches. You know, with Michael yeah. Grosch well, said what he said. they get getting good money for it. They can get abused. That's hey, what Strack, and you like TV cameras, right? Well, that too, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk a little bit of business here. Al, you've been dying for weeks to tell us what's happening in Pittsburgh, and that might lead us also to the situation on Long Island with Howard Milstein. Yeah, well, it keeps changing what's happening in Pittsburgh. The latest thing now is that the, they put forward a motion that if things aren't straightened out pretty soon, the league is going to dissolve this team. Now, it might look to the uneducated observer, i.e. the non-lawyers, the lucky people among you, that they're trying to blow up the team. Well, that's not it. What they're trying to do is force the bankruptcy judge to make a decision. Because the league just can't let this go on and on into the summer. You don't know how to make the schedule. You don't know how to make the divisions. So what they're saying is, if this isn't done, we're going to dissolve this team. And they're hoping, and they think they've, they've read this judge properly, he'll say, okay, let's accept Mario Lemieux's bid which is what they really want. But also, Strack, that means that Mario and his group have to get going here. They've got to go to the people that, that have the building, they own the lease in the building, the SMG people, yeah. and they've got to cut a deal with the SMG people because if they don't, it's not going to work for anybody. So well, I think what this building. is doing is, is expediting everybody, not only the judge, but Mario and everybody. Get going here. Let's make some deals because if yeah. you don't, you're right, they could dissolve and you never know, Yager could end up a ranger. Will, will they relocate or will You'd they like just that, dissolve? <laughs> Will they distribute yep. the players around the league or uh, you're will they right. move the team? Ronnie, you're right. They could move the team, too. Not only disbanding or dissolving the team is an, is an option, but also moving the team is certainly another option. Those people in Pittsburgh better pay attention to this because time is an, en is an enemy of this whole scenario right now. How about Long Island, Al? Milstein, the guy that owns that, is the guy that tried to buy the Washington Redskins in the NFL, and they said, no thanks, we don't want you. Now he's making overtures to buy it by the Toronto Blue Jays. And what this means to hockey fans is that, obviously, this guy's not terribly interested in the Islanders, and this is not a good thing. They should get this guy out of there anyway, get him out of the Islanders, and give the Islanders to somebody that wants to own a hockey team, yeah. not just use it as a jumping board to some other franchise. See, Milstein, Milstein has a brother, and they keep saying that if he's going to have another team, his brother will take care of the Islanders. But I agree with what you're saying, Al. Get them out of there. If somebody will come in and find a way to build a new building and take over the Islander ownership, everybody out there would be a winner, believe me. All right. Okay. Everything seems a little up in the air in Calgary, Eric. Uh, we're hearing rumors about Brian Sutter's uh, status uh, not being confirmed, although Al Coates wants it. And there's lots of kids that Calgary better sign or they go back in the draft. What can you tell us? Well, first with Brian Sutter, I mean, the Flames only have to pick up the option of his contract, and he and his coaching staff will be back in place. Al Coates wants Brian Sutter back as his coach, thinks he's done a pretty good job in the two years that he's been here, even though the team hasn't made the playoffs. The problem is that nothing happens quickly here. And in Calgary, Al Coates has to deliver his State of the Union, State of the Team address to the team's ownership group in about three weeks' time. And at that point, they will review his status as a general manager. He's the only GM in the league that works without a contract, so this is an annual thing for him. And with the only sign that you'll get that this management team is in place when they have the announcement that Sutter's been renewed. Otherwise, you know, they may look at making some changes. That Eric, don't you think that Al's done a good job there under the circumstances? Yeah, I think he has for the most part, but I, there is an element of ownership that, uh, that thinks that, uh, that, the ex, that the progress that they've made in terms of developing and turning the team around is a slower than what they would like. Who, who is that element? 
Well, I think part of the, the ownership group, when the ownership group was split about four or five years ago, the old owners, the Harley Hotchkisses and the Siemens, the ones that have been with Al Coates since 1980, are still squarely in his, uh, in his court. I'm not sure that the, the people that have come in since then are necessarily convinced that he's the guy. Okay, what about the kids? Daniel Kachuk, if, if what you say is true, three weeks from now, that only leaves two to sign Daniel Kachuk, uh, Chris St. Croix, and Evan Lindsay. Well, Phil, uh, Daniel Kachuk, their first round pick from 97, philosophically, they, they've got the, that contract uh, hammered out in the sense that they've already decided that the model is going to be Rico Fata. What's left to argue about are the bonuses. In terms of Evan Lindsay, who's the, the good young goaltender that's playing in, in, the, in the Western Conference semifinals right now, the Flames have a lot of goaltenders in their system, a lot of young goaltenders. And it may well be that if they can't sign Evan Lindsay, that any NHL team that's looking to make a deal like the Dumont deal that the Islanders in Chicago made should be calling the Flames right now because they're prepared to listen to offers for this guy if they can't get him done. So anyone that has a, a, a problem with depth and young goaltenders in the organization, there's a guy that can be had rather than waiting for him to go back in the draft. We're, we're really tight for time, so we'll leave St. Croix and uh, Robin Regeer. Al, I know you wanted to quickly touch on the two referee systems. Getting a lot of heat. Yeah, but it's a very good system, and the league, to their credit, has figured this all out, and, and they're going to bring in the best guys. I would hate to see in hockey what we see in baseball where the union says, oh, we've got to give everybody an equal chance because they're not all equal. Hockey is saying the best available referees on any given night are the ones that are going to handle these important games and I'm glad to see they're doing that. JD, last word? Oh, I agree totally. Two referee systems are going to get better as the playoffs move along. The players will adjust. I think it's going to be terrific before it's over. All right, uh, John, enjoy that uh, Detroit game tomorrow. The champs look like they're on a bit of a roll. Thank you, Eric, for the update on Calgary and Al. Uh, we'll uh, meet you in St. Louis. Who'd have thought it? The highest scoring team in the National Hockey League during the season, the Toronto Maple Leafs, can't buy one against John Van Beesbrook and didn't have a lot of chances. Four shots in the second period, Philadelphia. Keith Jones, the only goal, it's one zip through two at the Air Canada Centre. Two significant injuries so far in the Stanley Cup playoffs. One to Ron Francis. This occurs in game one. Midway through the first period, he's along the boards with Steve Hines. And as you see, when Steve fell, it's on Ron's right ankle could have hurt his knee. That was the first suspicion, but in fact, it's a sprained right ankle. He tried it tonight, but uh, was a no-go for Carolina. They're tied 1-1 in their game with Boston. No Yarmer Yager today, and here's the reason why. In the first game of that series, that little tug by Scott Niedermeyer was enough to re-aggravate the problem. Yager's had uh, chronic groin problems. He iced his thigh for about a half an hour after the game. The reporters asked, what's the problem? And at least the medical staff was honest enough to say it's the playoffs. We're not going to give you the answer, but they're reporting it's a groin pull. No Yager today, and the Pins won in any event. Miro Shatan, two goals, including the winner in overtime and an assist last night. Ottawa Buffalo tomorrow evening, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. The Sabres up 2 to none, and Dallas leads 2 nothing as they head for Sky Reach in Edmonton. Here's some fans who thought they might get in the Toronto Sun with that nice poster. They uh, not only hit the Sun, they hit us. The Leafs have only hit the post. Third period in Toronto underway. Philadelphia leading Toronto one to nothing. The goal coming in the first. 18-11 now. The shots in favor of Philadelphia after two periods. Flyers playing another strong game. Trying to go two up in the series. Brenda Moore in on the four check. Recky with the puck back to the line. Okay. In the penalty box. Philadelphia starting the period on the power play and the Leafs get the puck to the line and out. 45 seconds left in the penalty now. Myers and stalled on the line. And Toronto able to pick it up in their own zone. Markov blocks it. Skavich. Saw Leclerc get in ahead of him. Leclerc trying to center it. Recky moving fast to pick it up. All the way back near the line. Recky sizing up the situation. There's a pass in front of the net. And the goaltender. And another relief player was nailed. That was Falk, I believe. And the net went flying, and the referee, I think, is coming to the penalty box. Well, Volk was fired into the net, and on the way in, he looked like he cracked Joseph. The Flyers are going to get an interference penalty, I think. Here's the shot. 
And there goes Valk and Eric Deschardin was right in the goal crease. Look to the left of Joseph. And you're going to see Volk fly by after Joseph makes a routine stop. Here comes Volk. There goes Joseph. And Desjardins gets a penalty. Joseph is okay, even though he took a hard hit from Desjardins. And the net went flying. Interference is the call on Desjardins, the Philadelphia defenseman. Well, this isn't running the goalie, though, you know, like Pat Quinn complained about this, the Flyers. It's it's Falk and Desjardins fighting for territory, and Falk's into the net. And uh, it heads with uh, Curtis Joseph, who appears to be all right. Joseph was sent flying in a spectacular fashion. The first two periods, the Philadelphia Flyers outchanced the Toronto Maple Leafs 9-4, outshot them 18-11. Five Leaf forwards have no shots on goal, and no Leaf player has more than two. So four chances to score in 40 minutes is a tough situation for Toronto. Eight seconds from now, and this last player will be on the ice, and Toronto is up the ice. Merard, and it poked off his stick and back out. Now Cote is out of the penalty box, and the Leafs are on a power play. And rather than need something to happen now. They're 0 for 4 in the power play department in the hockey game, 0 for 6 in the first game, and they're trailing 1 0 in this game. On the power play, 27th overall at home this year, and haven't scored at all in this series. Here's what Berard said about it. And he might be right there. And Sylvan Cote. He's trying to look at it in a more positive fashion, but he's telling you that the flyer penalty killers get in front of the point shot. And then you either have to pass it or shoot it wide. They saw this coming to the right of Curtis Joseph. Deep in the leave zone, or they'll drop it in, and Sundin will try to win it from Bureau. He does. Karpitsev. Go behind the net. Moving out slowly. Toronto on the power. Trailing Philadelphia one and nothing. Correct. Sundin. Tipped away by Van Beestruck. Burn stopped it. Feeding it to the corner. Sundin slapped it behind the net. Perot tried to get it out front down. Carpet said was cutting in. He's very slow getting back, so Burr. The better skater. The two defensemen got back and helped out. Penalty time left, one minute. There we go. Up to shoot it in. Sundin on the backhand, couldn't quite control it. It's got the net line. Merard's drive is blocked easily, and Philadelphia's ball shoots it down the ice. In the penalty, 40 seconds. That's all. Solomon dropped it. Merard moved it up. Shoots it in. Arizona is there first. Shot it in there for Sullivan. Sullivan trying to center. Arizona in the corner. Didn't handle it cleanly. Sullivan again. Out front for Arizona. Sharp angle. Shot blocked by Van Beesbrook. 12 seconds left in the penalty. Philadelphia trying to get it out one more time. And they will. Right here. It's shut away. a chance to smother it. 16.03 left. The battle between the two goaltenders, Curtis Joseph, who has many 
on many nights this year kept his team alive while they struggled offensively and he's done that again and the Leafs have 16 minutes left to reward Joseph for his part of the job. Face off in the Philadelphia zone this time. Euro will remain there and the Leafs will have to send Domi in with Warner tossed out. Bureau is waiting patiently for the linesman to drop it. Finally, he put it in play. Fire is trying to come out. Domi had his man tied up in front of the net. The Leafs take it at center. McAllister mishandled it. Giving Bureau time to get in and cause a problem or two on the forecheck. Toronto training one to nothing. Warner takes the pass. Shot in wide of the net. Rushing into the Philadelphia player from behind. And this nearly causes a stir. Domi comes in and uh, is pushing in the middle of things. Adam Burke. Adam Burke was the guy that King hit from behind on a race for the puck, and he'll get the penalty. Will Derek there, Chris King. Chris King goes. Drawing two minutes for boarding here at 425. Um, period number three. Well, if the referee didn't see it, he could certainly hear it. And right from behind, Adam Burke, who's played very strong hockey for the Flyers, goes into the board's nose first. Now, Philadelphia has a chance to really do it in this second game of the best of seven. Winning the first game 3-0. They can win this one. Going home with a two-game lead. It'll be mighty tough for Toronto. Games three and four are in Philadelphia, of course. Philadelphia 0 for 3 in the power play in the game. Brecky has given a light bump behind the goal. Gets loose to take a pass. Comes all the way to the line to receive a pass again. Heads for the front of the net. Rendemore waits, waits. Rendemore shoots. Stop. Rebound. And the Joseph is there on the post. And he saves the game for now as Philadelphia nearly go up 2 0. It all starts with John LeClaire in front of the net. And if nothing else, he makes the defenseman take them. So it isn't quite five on four. If you don't take them, Joseph can't see the point shot. And the flyer defenseman, no, he's there. So they sometimes they just wrist it at the net. And they're not trying to score. And here's Markov trying to take LeClaire out. You can't move him. And you can see Joseph had a good, tough time finding the puck and makes a nice stop. Philadelphia win the draw. Dustain faked the shot. And Chardin wants to shoot. No faking will him, and he drilled it. It was blocked. Shot down the ice and behind the play. And that second referee was watching Markov and LeClaire. And uh, they're both going to go, I'm sure. Well, they're going to get it for roughing. Of course, we saw in the last replay how Markov was trying his very best giving up about 30 pounds to try and handle LeClaire in front of the goal. And they got carried away after. Watch the shot block by Yuskevich. A slap shot that came within inches of going down his throat. And here in front of the net, as LeClaire is sent flying, and they have a little scuffle as the puck ends up in the flyer zone. Yuskevich showing a big heart to go down and block that shot. He was lucky he could still talk about it. Nearing the six-minute mark of the third period. Face off to the left of John Van Beesbrook. He has not allowed a goal by the Toronto Maple Leafs for five periods now. And nearly six minutes on this third period. Puck is shot in. Harpin Sav. Gave it away as he almost fanned on it. Now BJ Nag again. This time he tried to feed it through to the goal mount area. It was intercepted and cleared out. 
45 seconds left in the Toronto penalty. Nice shot fired in by Greg. Joseph got the stick on it. Two Leafs decide to go on the attack. It's Warrior along the boards. Duchesne took care of him. And has 25 seconds left to serve. Joseph had to be careful with that long shot. And he decides he'd better slow the pace. And smothers it with two flyers coming right in. Well, part of the strategy of the flyers is to put some pucks on the net. Make Joseph handle the puck. He's good with it, but we the saw in the game number one it cost the Leafs a goal. And Joseph lost the stick with a stop he made earlier on this shift. And his teammates got it back to him before the second one. Here's the shot by Desjardins. And Joseph covers up. 1-0 Philadelphia. Here's the stick out of Joseph's hand. Carpets have slides it back to him. 20 seconds left of the Toronto penalty. That's the boarding call against Chris King. So the Leafs can win this face off. They'll buy a little time by shooting it down the ice. And then we'll be back to five on five. They win the draw. Escape. Lifting it high over everybody down the ice. Ten seconds from now, King will be on the ice. But the Flyers come up to center. Stop there. Sunday is bumped. Couldn't get by Burke. And now the leap penalty is over. So the teams are five aside. Period winding down. Nearing seven minutes of play as Joseph comes out. Thomas all the way back there. Couldn't make the rink wide pass. Red the board. Gave it away. He tried to fire a hard pass to the far side where Groovy was coming in. Groovy stops it. Shoots it in wide in the leaf goal. But it'll be a changing. Leaves trying to come out. And fans getting very restless now. Harrison Hall down. Ote turns. Has to go to Yuskevich in the lead zone. Sandine can't handle that high pass, but he's in to prevent an icing call. He touched it ahead of Terrian. He and Terrian fight on the boards. Ruby got it up along the boards. Not out. Ruby again. Push the lead player, Thomas. Stopped at the line by Carpet Sab and the back top of the puck is out. Nearing eight minutes of play in the third. Still one nothing. Philadelphia, a goal in the first. By Keith Jones. Harrison nearly got him. Bernard was up with him. And the Flyers break it up and get it on quickly. There goes Jones. And off the boards. Shot from a sharp angle. Joseph has to hang on. He does that. And Bob Clark has to be happy with what he sees in this series. Live on CBC, the one and only Hockey Night in Canada. Back with the Stanley Cup update from North Carolina. The Boston Bruins have gone ahead of Carolina in the third period. Allison and Carter, there's the save by Irbe, but Steve Hines gets it. Irbe should have looked behind in hindsight. Well, shooting the least 5-2 in this third period. 22-14 overall in the hockey game, leading 1-0. Just the one goal. Yeah. Penalty coming up against the Philadelphia Flyers. And Toronto will get yet another power play in this game. Leaves power play. Let's get rid of all this. Point summer checkup plus oil, lube, and filter, tire rotation, and a free jug of washer fluid. All for just $29.95. Only at Canadian Type. Keith Jones was the man who pulled off the tripping. Well, these are the kind of penalties you don't want to take. 192 feet from your own net. A trip from behind on carpet slip, and the Leafs get a power. 
Toronto was 0 for 6 in game 1 on the power play. They're 0 for 5 coming into this power play here in game 2. Philadelphia send them back right off the bat. That's Brenda Moore. The workhorse of the Philadelphia Flyers, number 17. And wearing the captain's shirt in the absence of Eric Lindros. Bureau up after the puck. Bureau stopped by Bureau. Philadelphia seem to be all over the place when the puck is loose. And they're on it first, almost always. Thank house. Up on the wing. Picked off that last one. Now the lead shooter is Burke along the board. Bernard Johnson along the line. One shot missing. Rebound! And Johnson couldn't turn around quickly enough. It's cleared by Markov down the ice. One minute gone in the penalty of game. Jones. one nothing Philadelphia. Nearing the halfway mark of the third period. Sandin. Pass behind Yuskevich. He had to stop to pick it up. And then the boot. They're offside. And the Leafs passing has really been atrocious in this series. Even when they're a man advantage, where you think there'd be more room to make passes. Leafs led the National Hockey League in goals, but over the last few years, here's what the team did that led the NHL in scoring. You can see it wasn't always a good omen. But this they must year, have had a goal or two in the first two games. You would think. All right, getting nailed. And Joseph has to be alert. Every second now. Another good thing the Flyers do on the penalty killing and five on five is get their sticks in the passing lane. And that was a good example just a second ago where Thomas tried to make their, uh, Iskavich tried to make a pass diagonally across the zone. Out went a stick. And you can see Van Viesbrook has had this goose egg going before this year, 218 minutes. And he now has gone five and a half periods without being scored on. Steve Sullivan was the guy that ended that long streak. Who's going to end this one by Van Beesbrook? 9.49 has been played in the third period. Follow on a power play, no shot from Markov. Sundin, he's checking. But he doesn't move it out this time. Sunning gets the chance. Shoots it to the corner. Comes around the net. Philadelphia will clear it. Down the ice. Jones is out of the penalty box. Toronto 0 for 6 in this game. 0 for 12. First games of the series. This one not done yet. The clear it. Burn and fired a wicked shot. High though. Sandin. Can't get it. Sullivan is up, cruising at center ice, hoping for a lead pass. That ball got across the line. The pass is intercepted. In the border. And the Flyers put it in deep. 9 10 left in the third. Zone line and it's lifted high into the leaf zone and Curtis Joseph had to come out with Rocky in. Now the clear. Toronto get as far as center. Deep. Shoots it in. But it's the fires on the puck quickly. Clear wasted no time getting it out. Langfell can't get too far and Toronto will turn back. Callister's weak shot. Easy save for Van Eastbrook. Leafs can't keep it in. 8.30 remaining. Callister gave it away inside the line. Three flyers were on him, and they get the puck. Greg shot it behind the goal. Langkow couldn't move it out front. He'll try it again, though. Langkow left it. Greg comes out, shoots, stop, rebound. And Joseph 
doing what he has to do in the dying minutes of this third period, keeping his team in there. Matters, I defy you to tell me who's winning. They both look upset. As the tension mounts, with 8 11 left in the third, Philadelphia trying to take a 2 0 lead in the series before it shifts back to Philadelphia. 3 0 in game one. Leading 1 0 here in the third in game two. Burke keeps it in. Jody Hall is knocked down. Gets back up, and the Leafs take the puck. McAllister made the play. Ball across center. Dumped it in. First, first one on. Here comes Colquay to pick it up and try to shot. And he's broke. Down again. And the puck stays out. The shut off the short side. Ruby cleared it in. 7.35 remaining. Philadelphia now, and Crafty nailed McAllister as he released the puck near center ice. Well, the Philadelphia Flyers' big defensemen have really made it tough on the Leaf forwards on any one-on-one -on -one battles for the puck. And that, I think, is the biggest problem the Toronto forwards have had in the offensive zone anyway, retrieving or keeping pucks. Because guys like Therrien, who's six foot five, or McGillis, who's six foot four, or Desjardins, who's six foot three, they lean on you, and unless you're somewhat close to their size and strength, you lose the one-on-one -on -one fight. Nearing the 13-minute mark of period three, and the Air Canada Center in Toronto. Game two, the best of seven. Carpet set around the net. Puck shot the center, and the Flyers are on out there. Redbird brings it in, shoots. Next stop, Redbird picked it up. Reggie was in front of the goal. Carpet set the ball, stepped in front of him. Piece of it, Solomon trying to drive it. And that's easily cleared to the line and out by Philadelphia. Gerard trying to fool McAllister, and Gerard might be hurt on that one. And a penalty will be called against McGillis, I should say. He hit the Leaf player coming in as he tried to deke him. Might have been a knee it, on knee. It might have been. Berard looked like he had the defenseman beaten. Now whether the defenseman just got a bit, the McGillis just got a bit of Berard, or whether he got him with a knee on knee collision remains to be seen. We'll be able to tell you the answer to that in a minute, but Berard is not moving very gingerly down there. And let's have a look and see how this injury occurred. Berard tries to go inside him. And you can see it's leg against leg, and usually when that happens, one of the two knees is hurt. Let's listen to this collision. It really wasn't a, a knee on knee thing, it almost was a skate on skate. Might even have called it tripping. But it happens, you know what, you're a defenseman, and you think Berard with his speed's going outside you, and then he cuts back inside you, and you can't quite get back in to get your whole body in front of him. And for the Leafs, uh, Berard, who has to hope that that was a hyperextension at worst, rather than a uh, lateral extension that uh, could put him out for a while. Might have called it tripping. In fact, they did call it tripping. McGillis for tripping at 13-13. And the Leafs get their seventh power play of the game. And they're 13th of the series, and they are 0 for 13. In six power plays in this game, the Leafs have had four shots on John Van Beesburg. That won't do it. Philadelphia leads one to nothing. Can the Leafs tie it? Sunday. Back to the line. Shot the front and wide of the net. Kept in by Sullivan. Board Sullivan trying to feed it back. It stopped at the point. 
Backhanded along the boards. Thomas. Oh, it's off his skate to turn out of his own. Sundin once more. Shooting it in. Sullivan on that far side. But Philadelphia in their own zone seem to rush harder up the puck. They're there first, and it's clear down the ice again. 50 seconds gone, and the penalty to McGillis. It's shot in. There's Deckhouse in there very, very quickly. And the Flyers just keep beating the Leafs to the puck and shoot it down the ice. 54 seconds left in the power play. Toronto trying to get organized. Update from Greensboro, two to one Boston late in the third period. Here's the equalizer, and what a nifty play by Robert Cron, replacing Francis from Kobalenko and Bataglia. It's two two. Bob and Harry. It is one nothing here in Toronto. Four twelve left in the third period. Philadelphia leading the Leafs. They're all won the draw. Fault foul. Flyers pick it up and clear it. Escavage coming back. Greg right on his tail. Easily picked off by McGillis. And Jones slaps it into the leaf zone again. 350 left. It's Davich. Girl through the middle. Rink line pass. Nearly worked for Ball. He was carried into the boards. Toronto up on it. Ball is getting out of the game. And then it was knocked away and down the ice. Cote is Davich. Flyers bring it back down. Edward winding up. Drop the pass. High shot. Joseph Ducky. 315 left in the third. Solid tie up his man. Ducky takes the puck to Philadelphia. Lost to the side. He's trying to get going. This up. Back to the line. Trying to go in. The Flyers straighten up back there. And they stop him easily. Three minutes left. Relentless taking the body in the hockey game. Rackney tossed it in. Redberg shot wide of the net. Sullivan looked over the shoulder and saw a clear coming. Leaks come out. Johnson shot it into the zone. Bird was there on it. Flipped it ahead. Knocked down near the line. Flyers do not get it out. Sullivan doing big work. Now Bird stops it. But it's taken away by Jody Hall. Decided. 2.20 left in the third period. The two teams are making those quick changes now. Hall steals the puck in the lead zone. Leaves it behind the net for Brindamore. Brindamore and Leclerc, two dangerous workers for Philadelphia. But Bernard shut it down on the wing with Thomas. Thomas is trying to come inside.
pulls off the post. Thomas puts it between the Van Beesbrook's arm and the post. And it's 1-1 one, one with 1.59 to go. And the Leafs finally have something to cheer about. Pat Quinn put his glasses on so he could see this goal. Toronto showing great courage when the clock showed under three minutes. They came close several times. They couldn't do anything with a man advantage in the game. Oh, for seven and Steve Thomas bursting down the right side and cut in from the outside and found just enough room to tie this hockey game. Oh, baby. This one is down to 159 left now. Thomas from Burrard at 18 one Roger Nielsen trying to make a last-minute change, but the referee won't let him. This rink is electric. Crowd standing. Marco shoots it in. an inch nose by he's tough to handle Roger Nielsen's had big Terrian against Sundin as often as he could get him tonight and it paid off there because if that had been a smaller defenseman he may not have been able to knock Sundin down well we were promised a great series Philadelphia took charge in game one with a three nothing victory and Bob Clark was telling me today that I think my team can play even better. Well, they got a goal in the first period when Jones scored at 11.09. And then it appeared they had everything under control and had the Leafs shut down. And you wondered if John Van Beesbrook would ever be beaten in this game either. But Thomas roaring down the right side and cut in right for the net and scored. And it's a 1-1 tie with 105 left. Thomas has been the most industrious lead forward, perhaps along with Steve Sullivan. But most of them have been neutralized by this flyer defense core. And Thomas finally got a chance to show the speed the Leafs have on this play. Now watch Van Beesbrook. He must think Thomas is going to try to go across the net because he opened up. And the Leafs get the first goal in the history of this building. And Steve Thomas does it with a minute and five. You know, and these fans throwing things on the ice. It hurts the Leafs. The Leafs had all the momentum for the only time in this series. And then all these boneheads throw things on the ice. And now we got to sit around for three or four minutes. This plays into the Flyers' hands. I guess so, because Philadelphia had their big top defenseman on there. Uh, almost... Uh, well, more than every second shift, if that was possible, every time there was a change, you'd see the same big guys coming out, Desjardins, Terry and Dykehouse, and Dan McGillis. And uh, they had to be tiring with the way the Leafs were coming on. Now, as you point out, 
this delay uh, favors, I believe, Philadelphia because the Leafs definitely had to change the pendulum a little. Well, I've always said give the fans the pom-poms on the way out of the ring, not on the way in. It's a nice idea, but it hurts the home team right here, Philadelphia, who are for the first time a little bit on the ropes. They get a chance with a four-minute delay to recover completely. Thomas at 18.01, electrifying the building, no question about that. Everybody jumped to their feet and stayed there. Play resumed. John Van Viesbrook played 62 games. That's a career high for him, and there is his mentor, Reggie Lemelin, the goaltender of note in the National League in the past. When you're the goaltender coach of a team who's allowed one goal, 119 minutes, you're doing your job. We know one thing, Bob, this game's going to end 2 1. Yeah. We're in overtime now if you want to take it that way. Because there's just about a minute five left on the clock. And the shots now are 25. 19 in favor of Philadelphia. They were ahead in that department from the get-go. Got the only goal in the first. No scoring in the second. And almost no scoring in the third. Until Thomas broke down the way. And I'll tell you, coming in off that far side on a sharp angle, John Van Beesbrook did not allow very much room on the post, but somehow he he got the puck at him, and it got through Van Beesbrook and across the line for a 1-1 tie. Well, I think John B Van Beesbrook might like to have a look at that again, because he got through him when there was not much room, and Thomas had no chance to get across in front of the net. But the Leafs had somebody coming down the middle as well, and... The lucky goal is what you need every once in a while in this business. Thomas made a nice play. Had a little luck at the end of it. Finally, I think they have their work done. They're working out. Took a while, didn't it? See what happens when they throw those pom-poms on. The papers break off, jerk. So they get the big part of the pom-pom off, but now they've got to shovel all the little bits off. They're going to flood the ice in a minute if no one scores. Boston and Carolina. 2-2, two -two and they're going to overtime. And after what Steve Thomas has done here in Toronto, we just might be going to overtime. Here it is again. See, he can't come out in front. And Beesbrook might have thought he could have, and then the flyer defenseman dove at him and forced Thomas a little wider. But he got enough on it to get it by Van Beesbrook. And Steve Thomas, one of the better wingers at cutting in off the wrong wing. He's got great speed. He's been a wonderful addition to the Leaf team this year as a free agent signing. And then, of course, after he scored, the fans got carried away. It was after the break of Sundin when he tried to go in to win it. Nice play by Terry and boy, you're going to knock Sundin down. You've got to get up early in the morning. The fans must have thought there should have been a penalty. I don't think so when you see the replay. You can't call everything. He got behind him. He got between his goalie and Matt Sundin. And he didn't hold him. He didn't grab him. I'm sure he didn't hook him. He took him down. And the crowd didn't think so. And then the delay. Now, how will that affect things? We're going to find out for you as they appear to be ready to go. A minute five left in regulation time. Score tied at one. Everybody got arrested. Sundin will come back on. He has Paris in his left. Thomas. 
Warriors giving the Leafs another chance in this hockey game. And maybe in this series, Toronto couldn't afford to go down. Two games to nothing to Philadelphia for the next two in Philadelphia. So we're tied now. And the Flyers have Recky on to take the face off. Clear to the left, Hull to the right, Mark Hull moving up over the line, trying a long shot. Into the final minute, of Harrison. around the net, Harrison trying to come out, he's out, shoots! charge for five periods and almost all of the sixth. Don't get down. We still have time. You never know. Let's go for it. Nothing to lose now. You're down a goal. Well, the faceoff is just inside the flyer blue line as there was an offside to cause the whistle with 31.8 to go. So they won't be able to get John Van Beesbrook out just yet. They love to win the draw, love to move it in a hurry. It would have to be in a hurry with just 31.8 seconds left. And then get down after the Leafs in front of Curtis Joseph. Here's the goal, Bob. It's a rebound, and it goes off the flyer defenseman's stick as Sundin backhands it, and it chips up over Van Beesbrook to give the Leafs the lead. Take it back. Van Beesbrook is on the bench. Roger Nielsen going for it right now with a face-off inside the Philadelphia line and the net empty. Sundin will try to push it by Brenda Bourne. He can't do it. It's in center ice. And shoot from there. Ducked in. 26 seconds left. Desjardins coming out. 22 seconds. Philadelphia making the rush. And it's broken up again. However, this is going to be an icing call, I think. Yes, it is. Icing called against Toronto. 
12.2 seconds remaining. Philadelphia with the net empty and the extra man on. Here's an important face-off. This is exactly what Philadelphia wanted. It's a lot easier for the linesman to carry the puck the length of the rink than it is for any Philadelphia player. And now they get the face-off with plenty of time if they win the draw. If they win the draw. And tonight they have won more draws than they've lost. Parole was 18 wins and five losses on in game one. But neither elite center, Perot or Sundin, and they'll both be out there, have a winning face-off record tonight. Brenda Moore will be the man of the hour right now for Philadelphia. He's ready, poised, set. Sundin is going to go in there for Toronto. Perot is also on the ice, just in case Sundin may be thrown out. And now, Pat Quinn Toronto will call a timeout. Let's settle down, everybody. We got 12.9 seconds remaining, and we have this game won. We have this series tied 1-1 going to Philly. Here's what we've got to do. He's lining, he's making sure they know what to do if they lose the draw. And he wants to make sure that everyone has their assignments here, because if they lose it, 12 seconds is a lifetime. And you can't be going to the wrong player. You can see they're talking it over. He's talking to Markov and Yuskevich. No one is in our house. She's just found it. Mark Nelson has his boys ready. Pat Quinn has his ready. Joseph is the only goalie on the ice. And he's out to the edge of the crease with a face-off to his right. And he's steering right on. Rod Brendamore. There's Curtis Joseph. Nerves of steel. You know, these great goalies have nerves of steel. And these books. Five shutout periods here at the Air Canada Center. On the bench now to watch the rest of this one. It gets back to the line. Shot in there. Recti centered up. Outside the line. The referee pointed to the neutral zone. In his opinion, it was deflected by a flyer player over the glass, and the face-off, unless he changes his mind, will be outside. Leclerc came very close to tying the game, you know. You got a stick on it, you're right. And then of course there was a physical battle in front of the net. Now the decision, and the face-off is. Coming outside the line, and the referee is going over to the Philadelphia bench, and he's making that deflection sign. You're going to see it now. And here it is. They won the draw, the Flyers. And watch in front of the net. Three Flyers, only one leap. And John LeClaire did deflect it. And there's the referee saying, I saw your stick hit it, John. The faceoff is outside with six seconds to go. So one more faceoff. Maybe. It's just outside the leaf line. And it's going to be Sundin, I am sure, who will take it. And Rod Brindamore for Philadelphia. Two to one, Toronto. What a final minute. Final two minutes, really. But Thomas scoring at 18.01. Sundin at 19.07. Tying goal and then the go-ahead. Here's one more time. Leclerc shot is wide. And this game is over. And this series is tied. And the tempers flare as they get set to go to Philadelphia with the series knotted and one apiece. Unbelievable that Philadelphia would get a chance, even though it was a 50-footer, on a face-off. Sundin let his man go. And Jones stepped by Falk, and they got a shot. And then all this broke loose. The Leafs were pouring off the bench in excitement of the win, and got stopped on the way to the melee. And they could have been in trouble had guys got off the bench and into the front. Cooler heads will prevail, I'm sure. Two minutes and had 
tied the series with a 2-1 victory tonight. Toronto on Friday the 30th. Philly, next stop in a series that's tied in a game each. Story of the first game was leave it to Beezer, and the story of the second, leave it to Buzzer. Toronto Maple Leafs, even the series with the Philadelphia Flyers here, the 4 3 stars in tonight's game. Steve Thomas was sensational, taking the man, scoring the goal that got Toronto on even terms. Curtis Joseph, Chris Terry, and here's Scott Oak. Ron, thanks very much. Here is Curtis Joseph, the winning goaltender tonight. Describe the sense of relief when you saw those two go in a minute and six seconds apart. Well, it's pretty exciting. Uh, Stevie Thomas got a jump on the defenseman, uh, uh, and he just blew right around him. And uh, Stevie's got a pretty good backhand, and uh, it was nice to see that go in. And, and then uh, Matt's goal, uh, he's great on the backhand also, and uh, uh, he put it where nobody's going to get it. And when Stevie Thomas scored, I'm sure you were thinking, that's great, now we've got a chance to win it in overtime? Absolutely, that's what I thought. We're going to overtime here, and then we had a little delay because of the ice, and uh, uh, but we came right back. Uh, uh, Matt's won the draw at center, went right down, and uh, went to the net and put her upstairs. Well, let's have a look at some of your work tonight, and tell me as we do, if you were starting to worry that uh, hard work on the part of the Leafs tonight was not going to pay off. Well, uh, we got uh, too much firepower to be uh, uh, shut out two games in a row, I believe. And, uh, um, you know, we just, uh, we've come back in the third period quite a bit, and, and uh, we did it again tonight. It was just nice to see. How do you feel you played tonight, Curtis? Well, <laughs> uh, we, we scored more, one more goal than the other team, so that's all that matters. Let me ask you about the confidence level of this team now as you head to Philadelphia with the series tied at one. Well, we've uh, been a pretty good road team, which is, uh, which is a good confidence uh, builder for us. And, and this was a huge game for us at home. We didn't want to go down into, into their building uh, down 2 nothing. So um, great win for us, and uh, we're looking forward to going to Philly. Congratulations on an exhilarating win tonight. Great. Thanks a lot. Ron, there's Curtis Joseph, the winning goaltender. Thank you, Scott. Congratulations, Curtis. Uh, well, Cujo, Cujo, I have he to makes admit, the save. Yeah, he did. Uh, you want to show two clips, but uh, you did say Toronto's going to come back and win 2-1. Why would you think so? Well, I got a little thing to show you. I turned to you after a shot. I said, that's it. I watch it. We got it. We got it tuned up. Number three star. Yes, the number, number three, three star, star tonight. Had a good chance to put it away. Not blaming him or anything, but... Over top of the net, I turned to you and I said, that's it, they're coming back and winning. Let's see it right now. And uh, Curtis, what a guy. Put a, he ducked on this one. If it's on the net, it's in, they're over. Watch this here. Coming up. Keep talking. It's well, coming. It's coming? <laughs> oh. Just it, being racked up right now. But, you know, uh, Thomas had the big hit, the elbow on Desjardins that kind of got away with. But he was such a presence here. both ways. Shh, quiet. Right. Now, when he drops a puck, watch this. Right over the net. That's it. I turned to you and I said, they're going to win now. There comes a time as a coach, Nielsen said, he's there. He just has a feel. You have a feel in a game when it's going to go. And, and when you miss a shot like that, you die on the bench if you're Philadelphia as a coach because you know they're going to come back. But isn't Curtis Joseph something? He makes the save. His average is always high. His save percentage is not good. But he makes the save when you're supposed to make the save. He's worth that $6 million, maybe 10 next year. Oh, now we have a little thing. Have we got this tuned up? Yes, I believe so. For all you kids out there, when you're leading by one goal in the last minute or a minute and a half, I'll show you what Jody Hall does to what he, everybody should do. Watch right off the bat when he gets at the far corner. He doesn't throw it out in front. He put it back in the corner. Now here it comes. He looks up. No. I'm going to put it back and he goes back out. Now watch what Brindamore does when he comes for the winning goal. Watch. He sees him out there. Puts it out. Takes it away. Kids, never do that. You put it back in the corner. Here comes Stumper. What a backhand boy. What a fine got that guy. But you never, ever try to pass it up when you're up one goal. You always put it in the corner back like Jody Hall. And that's, uh, you know, it's too bad for Philly, but good for our ratings, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Although uh, they're going to get better with uh, tomorrow night's games, too. we got a doubleheader coming up for you tomorrow. And you won't be here. Kelly Rudy going to be joining us. Yeah, he's good. What a break. Hockey Night in Canada continues. Toronto Maple Leafs, even the series, 3-1. to one. If you do say so yourself. Yes. John Van Beesbrook, perfect till the final two minutes. Toronto Maple Leafs, Steve Thomas, Matt Sundin provide the difference. Keith Jones, there goes Don Cherry. You're in a hurry. 
Pittsburgh won 4-1 to one this afternoon over the Devils. Dave Anderchuk spoiled the shutout bit of Tom Barrasso, who made 28 saves. And Drew Zak gets the winner, his first ever NHL gold. Native Cranbrook uh, providing the difference with no Yager. Shane Dolan, the winner in overtime. Phoenix beats St. Louis to square their series with the St. Louis Blues. And they'll play tomorrow afternoon in St. Louis. Boston, Carolina, as you know, are going to overtime. Deadlock 2-2. The Bruins up 1-0 in that series. And, of course, tonight in California, the first game of the clash between the Colorado Avalanche and the San Jose Sharks getting underway with Vernon versus Roa. Just bring up to date now on the standings so far in the Stanley Cup playoffs. First up in the Eastern Conference, New Jersey-Pittsburgh tied. As they say, they play tomorrow. Ottawa-Buffalo tomorrow evening on Hockey Night in Canada with the Sabres up by a pair. Carolina, Boston, it's one nothing Bruins, and they're tied in OT, and Toronto squares it as they get set for Monday night in Philadelphia. On the western side of the ledger, Dallas is up by two. Tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern, they'll be on Hockey Night in Canada. Colorado, San Jose begins. Detroit and Anaheim, the Stanley Cup champs up a pair. They'll play tomorrow afternoon, and the same applies for Phoenix and St. Louis, an afternoon date tomorrow at the Keel Center with that series, even 1-1. Stumpy Thomas and the Leafs celebrate to even it. We'll be back in a moment. Eastern Conference backs against the wall tomorrow in Buffalo. That's a 6.30 Eastern start for the Sabres and the Senators. We'll follow that. Brett Hull and the Dallas Stars at Skyreach in Edmonton. Up by a pair. That's 9.30 Eastern, 7.30 local start in the provincial capital of Alberta. Matt Sundin had a lot of heat and he scores the game-winning goal. Toronto breaks through to win 2-1. to one. For all of us, thanks for watching tonight. See you tomorrow night in Buffalo.